Discord pop out. There we go. Mm. All right. I am going to pull up chat. That way, maybe we have double the chance to actually get questions. Okay. All right. I think I got to start doing like a side by side thing here. I don't know why this just refuses to work. All right. I'll put the A in podcast. Game optional. Uh, Dragon Quest Tact? Is that the one? Yeah. Can I tell you that I'm sick of Tact? This game is dead. You know, hey man, actually, that's I, have, my... I have a question. Can you kill okay. something that has no life? All right, Chase, if anytime someone says that you're the reason Tact dies, like, I'm sorry, could I kill something that doesn't have a life? It never even was breathing. <laughs> <laughs> it feels like that every once in a while. I think the game is as successful as it's ever been, and I don't necessarily think that's a wonderful sign, but I think it's successful enough to keep going. We live now. Yeah, I mean, I'm live. I went the podcast is oh, live, okay. but sorry, you can say things like that. I'm not allowed to. But yeah, I don't think it's like I never thought this game would go for years globally, but I think we got a solid year or two. It's going six years. Uh, we're gonna lap Doken. We're gonna get twelve years. <laughs> I'm hoping Dragon Quest Twelve increases popularity of it, right? Because there's a lot of suckers out there that like stupid games like this, and I'm hoping that Dragon Quest Twelve. It's, that's like three years out. This game, we'll be lucky. If this game survives till Dragon Quest Twelve, it will be a wonderful time. Oh, there's no, ch there's no chance. Uh, yeah, no, Dragon Quest Twelve is going to be like most of a decade. <laughs> you think it's five years away? I bet it's two years. I don't know. Again, I don't know how early they, because we've never gotten a Dragon Quest game at the same time, I don't know how early they tease it, because it's usually a year after we hear about it, kind of, but that's after it comes out in Japan. Um. And I so I don't, I don't know how long they tease it in Japan. Trailer. No, no, no. It's not, I wouldn't well, I mean, call what we got a teaser. I mean, it is. It's a teaser. It's a tease tease. They're like, hey, we've got it, the a, title. It, it is a teaser of a teaser. It's like saying that the Elder Scrolls thing wasn't a teaser, right? Like it was, but it's not an exciting teaser because it's just a title. And it's not even a title. They just said Elder Scrolls like six or whatever. I bet we hear about, we're going to hear about Starfield uh, in the next week. Are you excited about that? Starfield? Yeah, that's the Bethesda. That's the new Bethesda RPG IP that they're making. They've been working on it for like cyberpunk length almost. So it's probably great. Oh, no. Yeah, I haven't heard anything about that. Well, it's because they haven't. All they did is they announced that Starfield would come out. They, they announced it like four years ago, like already. Ooh. And they announced that Starfield would come out um, before Elder Scrolls Six. What's up, Chase? Sorry. I'm reading a chat message. Sub Chase and Platt, Zeta Corp. Dragon Quest 3 HD can help with the Dragon Quest tact. I hope, maybe, but the issue is we already had a Dragon Quest 3 event. So, like, you can't, like, things, it could help, but I don't know. I, I, I don't see anyone in the goddamn world that isn't a hardcore Dragon Quest 3 fan being excited to play that game. Maybe, though. Mm, oh, I mean... If there's an old Dragon Quest game to be excited about, it's three. Um, plus, the love for it in Japan is way bigger than anyone here realizes. No, I believe. I'm just talking about, like, here globally, like, I don't think that that game will sell 100,000 copies. Like, I don't think that game's going to be a remote success in the West. I think everyone that played mm. Dragon Quest three in the last four, you know, you know, in their life will probably rebuy it besides me because I just beat it a week ago. But, like, mm. are you going to get... I don't know if anyone that's not played Dragon Quest 3, may, maybe. If they do a marketing push, it looks enough like Octopath Traveler that I think it'll get the Octopath Traveler crowd um, and the, mm -hmm. you know, Bravely Default crowd. But I, people I, aren't going to just hear that, about it and buy it. I'm hoping that they're actually going to add things to it. Um, or I, some people will call it sacrilege, but, the, you know, you can just go back and play the originals if you want exactly the same game, but... um. Like, uh, we talked about this before, like, things like the fighter or the warrior, like, they need skills. Like, I don't want to just attack with them. Like, the only difference between the warrior and the fighter is stats. I think That's it. they should separate character level and job level, and they should give you way more job experience than they do currently. That's mm -hmm. That's my opinion. Because the job system is the most 
it, it might be the worst job system in any game of all time. And that might be the first job system in any game of all time, but I don't think mm. that makes it good. Uh, it, it, you can come if it, it's the only game with a job system that you can safely ignore it from the first second of the game until the very last second of the game and not really care. You could easily beat. Oh, yeah, I mean, it was, it was very, I don't know. Like there were like PC okay. games with class systems, I think, but yeah, I would believe it would be, uh, for the if most it was part, the first, I believe it's like at least like in the first like a couple of years of job systems being a concept in video games. Yeah. Because uh, Final Fantasy 1 had a job system, but Dragon Quest 3's was actually a lot better. And it was only about two months older. So, I mean, when you look at development, it's not like they copied Final Fantasy at all. I mean, no. for those that don't know, Square and Enix were two different companies back then. So, yes. Enix was Dragon Quest, Square was Final Fantasy. And um, for the uh, for the youngsters, what, what do they call them? Zoomers? Z uh, they call them uh, Zumbas, I think. Mm. There was um Whatever. so the new RPG just came out Yakuza Like a Dragon, um mm. so like the new Yakuza games they've always been beat 'em up like semi RPGs not like you know not really yeah RPGs, I never played but one but yeah they're they're just beat 'em up games where you can like increase your stats um but now they're just full turn based RPGs and that's what the series is going to be going forward and it was a ridiculously good game but. It was ridiculously good for the reasons outside of an RPG, basically. Like, the RPG combat was pretty rudimentary, to say the least. It was very easy and not well-balanced, especially compared to Dragon Quest. But the point is, that game also had a job system. And even though it was funny, you know, the job system is very... The, the game is much more like... It's 100% real life, right? Like, you're in, like, Tokyo or whatever these cities are. And, you know, you're like, oh, my job is I'm a foreman. You know, like, there's the foreman class, and then there's the... Uh, the night host class and you know so it's all like real life jobs and like one of your teammates is just a homeless guy and his job is homeless guy and he likes he throws beans at people that makes birds attack him it's like funny right the game's got a lot of humor like that but you can ignore the job system the entire game there's not um, there's not really a reason to go to other jobs ever other than the fact that you think it sounds funny um and so i hope when that series continues because it was like one of the best rpg stories i've ever played like, it was so... I can't believe that there's a game that has a guy show up, like a fully grown older man in a baby outfit, and you walk in on him being fed a bottle by a woman with, like, really big breasts. And he's like, well, you know, a baby's got to do what a baby's got to do. You know, us babies, we like to cry, but we got to get burped too. And he's, like, giving this moral life lesson as from the perspective of a grown man pretending to be a baby, which is just... It was just this crazy, ridiculous scene, and it was funny. But then the game is also, like, the most dramatic, serious, down-to-earth, like, real shit ever. It's so weird. But it does it so well. Mm -hmm. Mm. Hello, Paul. Yeah, I, I'll I highly give recommend it a shot. It. I'm pretty much just waiting for it to go on sale. <laughs> yeah, it's definitely worth going on sale. Uh, the RPG mechanics itself are very lackluster. Um, the combat is, like, not bad. It's serviceable. But, man, is the balance fucking trash. Like, comparatively to other RPGs I've played, like, they clearly, uh, this is their first RPG. They need to, um, like, as a first thing, I'm like, this is fine. I had a good time. But, like, if they're going to make this the series going forward, you have a lot of work to do to, like, really refine these mechanics. Mm. Yo, what's up? I see you enjoyed the Dragon Quest stream. What are your predictions for the brand new Dragon Quest Twelve tease? Is there another new Dragon Quest Twelve freeze uh, tease? I suspect they will show us the color beige, and then that will be the, the tease. That's, yeah. about, that's about the extent of what they'll show us. They'll show us, it'll be whatever, is Dragon Quest Twelve Fires of Hope. It'll be Dragon Quest Twelve Fires of Hope, a dawn of a new age. Like, that'll be it. They'll add to the title. All right, I'm going to grab a drink really quick, and then I'm ready for the podcast. Okay, sounds good to me. All right, talk to your live still with chat. Talk. Oh, okay. I don't know who's in your chat. Let's uh, see. I go. Oh, yeah, because I opened another card. So let's bring up chats. Platts, YouTube. 13. Okay. All right. Uh, let's see. We got Zeta Corp uh, is in. Uh, Paul Gorham. Hey, how's it going today? It's going pretty good, buddy. Elijah Fascio. Uh, what's going on for Platypus? I don't know how he's doing. Uh, Rodrigo, you sup? I see you enjoyed the DQ stream. Uh, what are your predictions for the new 12? Okay, we talked about that. Paul Gorham says they'll give us a teaser by confirming slimes are in 12. Paul, 
You get it. I hope you get it, buddy. I hope that they like do this. Like we're changing the Dragon Quest formula, and it's like the first enemy is a platy punk instead of a slime, and then you go back to fighting slimes. It's like, and it, people are mad. It's like this is ridiculous. Ever for thirty five years or forty years, by the time the game comes out, we've been fighting slimes. The first enemy. You've shit on my grandpa's grave or something. You know, people just like go crazy. You know, it's fun. Yeah, like uh, Dragon. It is weird. Like they don't all start with a slime in the beginning, and it. Or like at least there will be other enemies it's like no i want to fight slimes for 10 minutes you get this shit out of here i want to fight slimes for the first half hour of the game i want to go from level four to level seven that way i'm ready for the next zone i don't want to play a dragon quest game if i don't have to do that i'll do it i always hate when dragon quest guides for pretty much any dragon quest game start with like Oh yeah, just go to this place at level one. I'm like, uh, no, you get to level four or five first, and then you start doing things. I'm not going to the tablet cave at level one, okay? Yeah, I like being, I like getting slightly above the difficulty curve early on, and then trying to ride that all the way through. Um, yeah, there's very little forgiveness in Dragon Quest, uh, the beginning levels. Yeah, old Dragon Quest. Uh, well, yeah, actually, new, even yeah, new Dragon Quest, like Dragon Quest Eleven, is like if you're have if you have extra hard monster dons and shit, like it's hard to go from if you just want to go from the starting town over to um whatever the the castle, like you're gonna fucking yeah. die if you don't try to stop at that midway point. Oh yeah, you know I've never tried it with any of the Draconian quests, so I did all of them. Yeah, and I um, actually did uh, all of them like in all Eleven the same S. Time? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I did. I did all of them on at the same time. Was it actually fun, or were there some fights where it's like this is this is horse shit? No, it was. So I already I beat the game once with just hard monsters on, and so I did mm. hard monsters and less experience. Most less experience is the most profound change, and hard monsters is probably the second, which I really really love both of those because mm. less experience gr grants you. It's not less experience, or maybe it is, I don't know. But it's like weaker enemies grant less experience. So there's a level cap at every point in the game. So you can't power level past a certain point. Like, okay. there, there is a strict level cap before you beat the game. Like, you can't get above, like, level, I don't know what it was. But it was, like, 56 or something. So once you get to that level, you have to beat the game at this level. And you know you can because the game is a professional game. And they know that you have the tools to do it. Um yeah. So, but and basically, I was like, the only way I'm going to play this game a second time is if I use every Draconian quest, especially because I've beaten the game. I'm pretty experienced. I know the strats. Um, it changed pretty much everything about how the strategies I used. It was, uh, it was very, uh, at least like meta wise, like in terms of what I would do to beat tough fights, it changed everything. Um, very, very fun. I, I personally love it, but also I play every RPG on the hardest difficulty always. Yeah. See, I'm, I'm the opposite now. Like, I like some challenge, but if I know it's going to get put me at points where like I start getting frustrated, I'm like, I just want the story. Um, I'm not, everybody knows I, I'm, I'm bad at tactics. Um, I just don't care. <laughs> um, I'm, I'm basically, I want the hardest difficulty the game offers. Once I'm there, I don't care if it's easy or hard or not. It won't affect my enjoyment. Like, um, Yakuza like a dragon, very easy game. I chose the hardest difficulty that it lets you very easy game did not bother me i had a good time persona 5 merciless difficulty or whatever the hardest very easy yeah. i personally had no issues with it um i had a wonderful even time. i did that one yeah i had a wonderful time it was very very good um and now then there are games like persona 3 where i'm like that was fucking hard uh if you play persona 3 the super ps2 edition you play on, on hard where you can't control your party members ai like you, they do what they want Oof. That's fucking hard. That's really hard. Um, but yeah, I don't really care about, I, I don't necessarily care about the difficulty level, but I want to give the, I want to do the most difficult challenge the game offers because I feel like for me personally, because I'm already kind of a, I'm not a min maxer to the extreme, but I am a little bit. Mm -hmm. I don't feel like I am utilizing the game's systems. If I like, let's say this game's like, Hey, we have this whole system about improving gear. Or we have a job system, for example, and I don't need to use it to win. I'm like, why the fuck did you even make it? It's not needed to to tackle the content. Uh, so I like putting things on as hard as they can. So I need to use the systems in the game in order to overcome the game. Um, let me see. Do we? Uh, you want to like officially start podcasting now?
Yes. Okay. I'm going to hit, um, by the way, not that anybody else needs to hear this, but, uh, I'll just, I'll hit like a record button. Do you want me to like share this with you after like our official podcast, uh, edit? Um, it's still preferable if you have a podcast edit, because then we have the same okay. thing shared between all of our channels, but all right, cool. Uh, I'll put this on Google drive later and it will take like an hour, but <laughs> yeah. All right. So, uh, ready, set, go. What's up, guys? Welcome to um, the second week of uh, me as the new co-host on the weekly Dragon Quest Tact podcast with Platt and Chase. Here's my co-host. Brr, Platypus! I don't even practice that. I just throw him at him every time, and he picks up on it. The guy's a genius. How okay. much of my gross background he can you see? Uh, let me see. I, I don't even have your whole thing in view. Um, don't worry, I'll pull up the podcast. Let's see. Oh, yeah, um... No, I mean, we got Nick Cage over your shoulder, and you got some Pokemon over on the other one. Um, okay, this is good. You got your I'm... mic in your face like a little Schwanz or just, something, which is kind of like, weird. For example, but... I just have a sponge sitting like three feet from my face, and like I have like, because my cat's pissed on the floor yesterday, so I still have all my cleaning supplies <laughs> and shit out. I'm in this weird situation since, uh, believe it or not, for some fucking reason, there are more people in your chat than mine. So now, like, not only am I dealing with, like, kind of... Uh, like, re like getting your cam to actually come on my stream labs because it seems weird. So I have to have that in its own window. And then uh, now I've got chat in my, so I need to be able to see my chat and then your chat. And it's just kind of like, I'm only seeing half of my OBS screen. <laughs> and you know what? More me. More exactly. Flat. Yeah. I like to give the little guys like you a chance to a little room to shine. I'm big where it counts, Chase. Yeah. <laughs> um all right. So uh dude, what do we talk about this week? This is your job. I show up, I bring the audience. You tell me what to talk about. So it's uh it's best friends week or day. I don't know. <laughs> Which one was it? Yeah, uh, did you see the Twitter post last night? I see I get a notification on my phone for every tweet they do, uh, because I just don't want to risk missing something. Um, but yeah, they also tweeted today about the Cave of Trials, so that's fun. Um, it's National just a Best life. Friend Day. Who's your? It's what's kind of weird. Um, who's your best friend monster who will always be in your team? They showed a picture of Nightclubber and Boss Troll. It's kind of weird monster choice. <laughs> yeah. Um, with, with a big typo on it, right? Does it actually have a typo? Yeah, I can't remember what it is exactly, but it's like uh. Who's it's, your best monster friend? He'll always be in your team. I th I think you're I think you're piecing that together. That's I don't think that's what it said. Let's take a look. I'm looking at it right now on my stream. It's National Best Friend Day. Who's your best monster friend? He'll always in your team. He'll always yeah. in your team. <laughs> yeah. Damn, you're absolutely right. That's like that Morpheus thing. It's like, what if I told you you read the first sentence wrong? It's what I if told you. Like, oh, God, Morpheus. Yeah. I see. Oh, yeah. The, so the Twitter, yeah, I didn't check it today. It's for some reason they just put up another post about the Cave of Trials, which. Okay. Um, I really wish they gave like, so here's the thing. They gave us a roadmap, right? And the roadmap was incredible, but they haven't yeah. updated. It was like they haven't updated it. Or they haven't, like, reposted it. Like, Disgaea RPG, which is a game that I personally don't like, but it got a... It gets a monthly uh, event list, right? They bring out an event list for everything that's going to happen in a month, and they get way more content than we do. Like, every week they have... I, I would say it's too much. Like, there's a point where it's, like, there's just too much going on at any given point. Um, Are they catching up? Maybe. I don't I don't know. I don't... I don't. I just watch a YouTuber, so I don't really know what it's like in-game. Um, oh, okay. But I just know it's like there's always like five events going on and it's like they're a short one, like one week events and then a bigger month long event. Um, but man, yeah, like like here, according to this, like I'm looking at the timeline right now, new in June, hard chapters three to four. We got new high difficulty content, which is Orochi trials. We got new stages and regular battle roads. We got and then Summerfest. So we have and we got kind of. That means we might not get new content until July. 
you might have a month of having exactly what we have in the game if Summerfest doesn't add more to it, which I assume it will. Yeah. This isn't summer. This feels like I, I, I kept looking at the announcement. I'm like, this is the lead up to Summerfest, right? Because this isn't this isn't an event. It's a login bonus. The login bonuses are very nice. Um, so I love that, getting like, skip you know tickets every day and herbs. Yeah, and a, a week of just being able to do the tome event. Honestly, I, I'm less excited about it because I don't have the gold to use it. But anyway, a, a week just towards Tome event is fine. But when did this start? Like the third or fourth? Like the, they're they're giving us eleven days of the Tome event. Uh, that's cool. But like, I don't want to log in and use skip tickets on the Tome event every day. And that's only, you know, I mean the the, the only po- content they put in was uh, bills and. I mean, you seem to be on the exact same page as me. Like, you can do it if you want, but the average player, like, anybody that's actually seeking advice here, like, you know, if if you're saying, like, you're wrong, it doesn't work for me, like, well, you're not who I'm talking to. I'm talking to casuals and noobs and stuff. Casuals should not be touching the Cave of Trials right now. It's just, it's it's a flat-out bad idea. Well, (laughs) it's a flat-out bad idea for everybody in the entire game, no matter what right now, because there's a tome event going on. Go get your tomes. When there's an equipment event going on, do it. I know that you only have ten times a week, but if you're not clearing eight, if you're not clearing eight, nine, or ten, like maybe even maybe seven, I don't know. But if you're not clearing seven, eight, nine, ten, then just use your twenty stamina and go get yourself some tomes because you're gonna you and need infinite is, of those. Yeah, it's got to be at least seven for it to be worth the stam. And at seven, um, I don't know what the chances are. I'm not gonna break it down, but um. I mean, you've got a high failure rate. I mean, there's there's uh, 10 rounds at least that you have to survive a crit. Yeah, you don't need to, Um, if you're a whale or, you know, a, a dolphin with well-allocated resources, um, you can just brute force it. You don't need to use poison strats on seven. Um, yeah. But, like, once I get two orbs in my sorrow, I think I can probably handle it because, right, I'll have a three awakened Zoma. I'll have a two awakened Sorrow. And, you know, I have other just lot really powerful units. So I think I'll be able to just straight up farm seven without having to use poison strats. But, like, that's still not probably the average player. Yeah. So, yeah, right. I mean, you got to provide goes, crits. you got to uh, land and venomate. Like, for, first of all, this is all assuming that you have Hell Gladiator. If you only have uh, King Bubble Slime, go, dude, you have two rounds to run to uh, land and venomate. Yeah. With it, only the one quarter reduction, that's insane. I would say Hell Glad- King Bubble Slime. I don't think is mandatory. I do think Hell Gladiator is essentially mandatory. Exactly. Um, without, yes. if you want a reasonable chance, yeah. And luckily, he's generic. And like, I do. We do forget. I don't. Maybe we don't forget. But there is um a Bodkin Archer that we is getting a big update. You know, in six months or whatever. But like, he has mm-hmm. a Poison Arrow at range three, so he can. If you have a formation, you could put him in a King Bubble Slime slot, and you could keep trying to poison with him as well. Um, yeah. So you could like he's like a bad King Bubble Slime, but you could at least attempt that. So um, there'll yeah, be it, a couple of maps where his range will allow. Like if you're at a cover formation, I think there are situations where it's hard to like uh, the Prussless fight, trying to poison some of the things with KBS. It's like it's not quite in the right spot. Um, the tr- the Archer. I don't know if his range is three only, if it's or if it's one, two, three. No, it's spots, always it, but, there, there's not uh, any ranges in the game that are. A range of ranges, if that makes sense. Everything is always a set range. It's always the max, right? Well, the heels are different. The heels, the right, heels right, are right. one. Or two. Uh, yeah, right. Uh, things that aren't attacks. Uh, all the buff okay. spells can have a, a range one to two or whatever, or one to three. Yeah, like a sap is. I can't or, think uh, of anything. Kabuff is yeah. really far, but I have not. I don't think I've seen an attack with a varied range. Yeah. No, you're right. Um, but uh. Oh, so um, let me see. Uh, now, we were talking about the, the Twitter before. Do you want to go over uh, what our favorite monster best friend is? The chat wants to know. Yep, yep. Let's take a look at it. Let's see what they give. I already have my monster best friend, but I don't have anyone that will always in my team. Mm-hmm. Um, Let's take a look here. I don't have... First, I like that they say he. That implies mm-hmm. that there are no female monsters. Um, He'll always in your team... Uh, so not only are there no female monsters, if there is a monster you think is female, they're not allowed to be picked. Uh, or they're, mm. at least females aren't allowed to be your best friends, which I understand. You know, I, I think you can have female monsters, but they're not allowed to fight. Yeah, they have to. 
They're there just for the uh, grinding of the rank up mats for your actual S tiers. Well, I was watching a, a, a broad in Japan. Uh, that's a YouTuber. Uh, like I'm, I'm not like I don't like watch all of his videos, but he's had a couple of them that are really interesting. <laughs> like some things you can't do in Japan and uh, stuff like that. And uh, one of his videos, he said like Japan is like still sexist. Like I, I can't remember. There was uh, I think it was like the Olympics thing. Like they had like a, a female leader on it and they're like well this is fine as long as she doesn't talk too much because we know that women can't stop talking that is like I'm, I'm, I'm offended at that uh my my ex coworker Kayla Bolcott says uh they them please refer to the monsters as they them yeah absolutely yes. <laughs> um so let's take a look I, here. I love it I, I'm glad that you picked up on that right away now you have to refer to them as ex -associ uh, work associates yes ex <laughs> yeah, ex work associates. Uh, yeah. I worked for his mom. All right, so let's come back here. What is my best friend monster? Now, this is you could take this a lot of directions. You could take this a lot of directions. Am I talking about which monster do I like the most, or am I talking about which monster I'd most likely want to hang out with, or am yeah. I talking about which monster I would feel I could rely on? I don't yeah. know because like there's a there's a world where I pick sorrow, but I don't want to hang out with sorrow. Sorrow, I and I don't trust Sorrow, but I always want him on my team. No. Yeah. Um, but King Bubble Slime is my favorite that I always want on my team because he's adorable. But I have a feeling that he might smell bad. No, call me crazy. Mm. Yeah. I. I think maybe honestly, it might seem lame. I think there's a chance it's Emperor Slime, and for no other reason that I think this guy. I think this guy covers the tab, you know? I think this guy, he's a he's literally an emperor. He's in charge of all the slimes. People aren't asking, you know, how much. He's just buying it. Oh, okay. I thought you were, like, because he was made out of diamond, like, here, let me take care of the bill. Like, just chip a little bit off. Like, no, here, no. This... I, I, think, I think his uh, status, like, he's literally king emperor of all the slimes with his own domain and stuff. I think... And he's, Isn't so he, that more like one of the story characters, though, too? Like the the king. There, there's a king slime with like the weird beard in the story. Yeah, Isn't but he the, I don't know if I. They, he's not allowed to be in my team, so I don't think I could. If they add him to the game, and then an emperor for slimes. Oh my god! Well, I mean, their their actual social structure makes no sense. I don't think. But imagine if they add the the big bearded guy, the big bearded king from the story, or Magellan. Like if they add Magellan as an F rank, I would max that fucker out. I don't even care if they make it a gotcha F rank. I would mm. fucking get Magellan. And then, I mean, we need to, uh, we need, uh, what, Red Rum? What's the, this guy from Chapter 18? Crim. From what? I was making a joke. Uh, Red Rum. That's, uh, from that's the murder. Shining. That's murder. Yeah. Yes. In the mirror. Yes. You can see it. Uh, but only some of the letters are backwards. So it's, uh, whatever. You know what? This is tough because there's a lot of good there's a lot of good monsters in the game. I think it the monster that might fulfill every every quota, one that I think might be cool to hang out with, one that I trust, one that I want on my team almost every time, and I think is you know just a chill dude. I think I might pick Stone Golem. Oh yeah, I love the Golem. Stone Golem, I think he's always got my back. You know, he's there to he keeps me safe. You know, he's obviously a bruiser. He's tough. Uh, I can make fun of him and it won't hurt, you know, it won't bruise his ego probably. Uh, well, and I mean, honestly, he a, seems like a cool dude. He's a guardian. You put him outside, you put him in your driveway, nobody's coming to bother you. That's what he does. He guards the gates of Cantlin, you know? Yeah, I think I think Stone Golem might be my, like, for, there was a time where I would have picked, like, Leary Loud or something, maybe, as, like, a my favorite cover tank. But, man, this guy... Leroy. This guy has defense, all right? This guy has got more... I don't know if he's got the... He doesn't have literally the most defense in the game, but he has the most defense as a cover, I think. Maybe, maybe like, Armored Scorpion does, but I don't have yeah. Armored Scorpion. Plus, Armored Scorpion looks fucking stupid. Sorry I if it's your favorite unit. Stone Golem with the Platinum armor is a, is a, is a flat 500. I actually think Night Clubber has more de Night Clubber has more defense at level 90. Yeah. And I don't even have two I have zero orbs in my Night Clubber and he's already at 512 defense. Night Clubber, if he did anything like 
he would be so good. Like in a specific fight, let's take a look here with heavy frizz and because I have a max awakened one. Lucky me. Uh, frizz and sizz resistance max night clubber. If you if I had enough orbs to put two orbs in a shit unit and I could put them in the night clubber, it would be interesting to see what content he'd be good in because his defense is ridiculous. You get plus three modifier on this. This guy, he I mean, he'll take almost no damage from almost anything, right? I mean, Emperor Slime has the most defense, but it does. He has he has a uh, four HP, so it doesn't matter. Does he? I can't remember which one has more. Let me, let me look. You know what? Sorry, that's I, actually that's a great idea. Use a Night Clubber for the Orochi fight because we already know he just spins every single turn. That means this guy might be. I mean, the the issue is Selfless does reduce damage like forty percent or something, so that might be a big deal. But if I had a six, uh, if I had a level one ten Night Clubber. With like the best armor on, I bet his defense gets up to almost uh like seven hundred. I bet it's like six fifty without any buffs already. Um, by the way, oh by the way, like uh you know my my Emperor Slime is only awakening one and my Night Clubber is three, but they're both level ninety and uh it's four seventy two on the Night Clubber and three ninety three on the Emperor Slime. So he actually has a significantly higher defense than um. Emperor Slime. That's why I was well, saying, like, the Night Clubber and also, it, like, there are some really good beast units. His leader skill is beast physical potency by 20. Mm -hmm. Like, I feel like that could, in a niche situation, put him over the edge. Yeah, I mean, I feel like there could be a really it, good beast arena team with him in the future. Um, Because I think there are some sick beast physical units uh, coming in the future. I'm actually impressed. I never, Night Clubber could be an Orochi farming machine. Because he doesn't do any damage, mm. but his his defense might be so high that he doesn't need, um, like like you may not need a cover tank. Just put him up front, right? Where you would put you'd have to put the hell gladiator where you normally put the hell gladiator. So it may not work just off that. Um, but I think there are probably guides where you can. Um, yeah, I can see Night Clubber working in that fight because the biggest issue with that whole fight is the amount of physical damage going out. Yeah, um, although, uh, you know, I was seeing more playthrough videos. Apparently there's a strategy where um, you line up behind uh, one of the stones and Orochi will just sit there and only scorch twice a turn. Oh, well, that would be so weird. I think... shit. Or, or does he do fire breath, right? Not Because I don't know if he has scorch. Yeah, he I think he does, does like the big a twice a turn. Okay. Yeah, so you don't get Orochi to come down the middle. You get him to go to the right. And then only your first unit is getting hit by uh, Scorch, so there seems to be a better method. Now at the end, you're still gonna you're still gonna have to take a few rounds of um, the uh, the the tail and stuff like that when it gets uh, boosted up. But I think yeah, that'll take out a lot of RNG. If uh, if you have Sorrow, like I think you just can one shot the Prism Peacocks that he or the Hybrids that he summons. Maybe like if you can handle like the hybrids mm. aren't that bad. The reason they're so bad is because they fuddle and they get your cover tank to stop covering, right? Because they confuse Stone Golem. Um, if you could just uh, have a different strat for tanking where you're not needing a cover tank every single turn, I think there's a good chance that um, you could just handle the the ads aren't that hard, right? Like I mean, okay, they are hard. I, I'm talking from a dolphin slash whale perspective at this point. I'm not talking yeah. from a casual player, but the ads aren't that hard if you um, are a day one player and you have things like Zoma because you saved and you rolled on that. Like I have a three awakening Zoma, which is way better than I thought I would have. Um, and he could two shot the ads. He can kill both the dragon ads by himself. No problem. Um, while the other team just stands around and does nothing. And so the yeah, other two the way, ads I could probably get I, as well. I did the wrong banner one time, but it was the general pool banner and I got fuck all for it. So I got, I did one whole i mean I, I i hope that short was enjoyable for people because that took like two and a half hours to edit and then mostly because <laughs> that's mostly out of just like not knowing how to edit but obviously Dude, like, like i, it's I, a lot I of effort. like i feel bad now like i've looked at like smaller youtubers uh make videos and like i don't edit and i'm like wow what a lazy sack of crap and now yeah. i'm doing it, i'm like oh the most basic editing is a giant pain in the butt especially when you don't know what you're doing i just don't like I find no no editing way more enjoyable than heavy editing. It depended on the type of content. But like 
for like Northern Lions, like my favorite YouTuber, and he doesn't edit any of his fucking videos ever for anything, you know, and he's got like mm-hmm. almost a million subs. Um, and it definitely works for some formats better than others. Yeah. Yeah. For like gaming and stuff where you're playing a game or you're talking about a game. I like, I hate too many jump cuts in the middle of what you're trying to talk about. Um, maybe sometimes some jump cuts, you know, if you misspeak and you edit it back together or you're rambling too long, that's one thing. Um, but yeah, I don't like heavy editing in most videos, but there are ones like educational videos, right? Like something like I'm watching, uh, I just watched this documentary on how, I don't know, some product was made point is like without edits, that is literally an impossible thing to watch. Like how to cut diamonds or something. It was like that. Oh yeah. Well, the video I made just before this stream, like it's first of all, anybody watching it, like I just, I don't know. I I wasn't super happy with it. Like I just felt like I couldn't do it, but I did like three or four takes on it. And then every time it's like, uh, either I screwed it up or like I rambled so much that I lost my own train of thought. And I was just sitting there going, (laughs) uh, and then I ended the video. I'm like, you know, I could try to like, fix it and come back in at the end but first of all i wasn't happy with it second it's gonna take me like 20 minutes just to edit like slapping two video segments together anyway so like let's just try it again and maybe it'll be good this time and after three or four times it still wasn't good but i put it on youtube anyway because you know fuck these guys all right two things in connection to that one if you could see if you saw all my videos unedited like if you saw how many times i'm recording a guide for something and every t- this is this is a cheat code, guys. If you watch any of my videos and you see me go, ha, quick cut, that's 99% of the time. It's because I fucked up the fight and I'm like, I just did a thing. And I said, fuck. And then it's like, and then I just like, oh, I got a fucking 10 minute fight. Oh, and I fucking, oh. all right. And then I start the fight over and then I'll just try to find out where I was and I'll go, ha, quick cut. And then I'll just continue from there. But I, it's always it's like only one time out of like a hundred has it been genuine technical issues. It's always been me fucking up a fight. But really, really, really quick. Sorrow the Manslayer. Demonic devastation bang attack at plus ten deals four hundred and twenty percent potency. Mm. Yeah, which is a little bit stronger than the average single hit uh A rank uh physical hits. And it's an AOE around him. Yeah, but it's also 420%. So that's very important. Well, yeah, I mean, well, what I'm saying is like Kakrackle Slash goes to 405, I believe. So it's it's even stronger, and it's AOE. And there's a weapon specifically designed for it. Guess, guess what? I have a weapon right now, Sorrow Nails. Mm. Obviously, it gives plus uh, 14% potency to Demonic Devastation. I've got no luck on mine. I've got like, I think I've got a a, a gold uh, agility roll on it, which some people on the Discord are saying you should go all agility. I'm not sure about that. Um, but uh, I hate. Yeah, like I can it, only get like bronze rolls with that or gold rolls. I can't remember. It, it sucks. I think this game would be ten percent better and forty percent would feel better if they didn't charge me a thousand gold or like I have a hundred and seventy eight sorrow nails. Right? Mm. I could roll a hundred and seventy eight yeah. times on this weapon. I don't literally have enough gold from now until I stop playing the game to do that. Why oh, yeah, the plus, fuck I've done like would I do I, that? I've done like sixty plus rolls on it and the best I've gotten so far is a gold agility roll and two silver bonuses for demonic devastation potency. Yeah, right now like that's I, as good as I can get. This is where I stopped because I got gold, uh, demonic devastation, a silver demonic devastation, and a gold agility, and I'm like, that's good. Yeah, I don't want to change turn order with Sorrow Nail. I already have golden claws with all agility on it. I like mm. having. I like having. I already have full agility on a weapon, and so I don't. Plus, here's the thing: I have 180. Of these sorrow nails, I can re-roll it anytime I want, as long as I have the infinite gold required. But someone in chat is like, like, go full agility. I'm like, no. Yeah, I feel like there's gotta be a better system coming for equipment in the future. How far away that is, I don't know, because I'm not here to doom and gloom. I don't I don't think this is the game with the kind of legs on it to go for four or five years, but it could maybe. I mean, in Dragon Quest in Japan, like you literally making a Dragon Quest game is just like holding holding a gun to somebody's head and asking for money. Like they pretty much just have to pay. Uh, yeah. So maybe it'll go longer. Um, but 
that being said, yeah, I don't know. There are a lot of systems that I think will come eventually if the game lasts long enough. And I think fixing equipment has to be one of them because it's pretty shit right now. That's one of the things about gotchas that's so weird is like they feel like they're designed with problems. That way, every year they could fix some of those problems and get people excited that they fix those problems. Oh, yeah. That's why I was saying I was surprised that the Bloom Talent system uh, came so soon. Um, it's uh, 10 months is actually pretty quick for that. Uh, they had a, I was telling you in my stream last night, uh, Doken had a very similar system, but that took at least two years, I think. Yeah, I actually think, I don't recall. like, I have no concern. So th I have, I, I have a tiny, tiny bit of concern over the Bloom system. Now I love it mm -hmm. and I'm excited for it in the way they're tackling it. We've talked about it a bunch. I am super impressed with, with the way they're making these units better. They're not just giving them stats. Mm -hmm. You know, they're making them interesting and they're not they're overpowering them maybe for their rank, but they're not all just becoming S rank units. Right. The F rank slime might be like a D unit now or something. Right? It might get like a boost in terms of, in you know, punching up. Um, mm. But I don't like that the first banner unit. I don't like that Dragon Lord is getting one that that worries me a little bit that banner mm. units might because like that's the point where it's like, all right, the power creep might be going a little bit too fast, but um. For all the other units, like I'm not concerned at all because they're all pretty much underpowered right away. Um, yeah. There's, but there's like yeah. the thing is for every unit that they've done, I'm like, there's five weaker units they could have done. Um, so I hope that mm. all weak units do get it eventually. But uh, the thing is, at the same time, I thought that at first, and then when I read the changes, I'm like, okay, these are pretty profound, interesting changes. I don't know if they want to do this for 150 plus units, you know, because these are these aren't just like, hey, all these weak units now get plus ten percent potency um they're like changing their kits and shit but now it's like how, how many things are stronger than this new metal dragon now we don't know exactly how it works out by the way uh somebody uh, uh delzer on uh the discord by the way i was kind of um delzer caught me in a bad mood a couple of weeks ago and i was being like keyboard warrior in the discord and then like when i came in last week he was actually very nice to me so i appreciate delzor he does seem like a nice guy Anyway, he was showing videos of um, one of the Japanese uh, players, I believe. And uh, so the follow-up attack that uh, uh, Metal Dragon does, it is uh, for other allies attacking, not them taking hits. I think we know that already. Um, Which might make it but, better. Uh, it is about half damage as his attack. So it's, oh. it's not the same missile as his attack, but it is still like... They showed his move doing about 1,000 and his reactionary ability doing about 500 yeah which are, is insane are you like yeah we got to remember that's a thousand marshall meaning there's no fucking getting away yeah. from it you're not like you could have 10 million defense that doesn't give a fuck yeah i mean we, we have a caster mage now essentially um <laughs> it's just crazy that's a it's exciting i because i'm sorry a caster tank that's what I meant. Uh, we have a mage tank now, essentially. That's how uh, arranged martial ability works. Like <laughs> I do hope Great Dragon gets uh, some. I, I I know he's getting his big like increase, but I hope it's like almost that level because I actually have two orbs in my Great Dragon because I think a Dragon Breath team is like very viable because Breath is just it, it's like martial but it tends to be better um, because yeah. it doesn't miss and it is ranged, but. Yeah, and I mean, we got that Dimension Dragon that apparently has some pr pretty crazy output, so. Yeah, I want to do a Breath Arena team. I think, like, I think once we get a few more powerful units, maybe, like, a Max Awaken Orochi, when, you know, next year, um, I think that kind of shit could be um, viable, because Ray Dragon gives 20% potency, right? It, they're adding more and more dragons with powerful breaths, like, Breath is a sub theme within the dragon like thing. Like they all have pretty high attack, pretty high HP. Um, but yeah, the extra breath potency between shared between all of them, I think is definitely going to be very meta. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, oh yeah, uh, that's a uh, insane evil in the chat is pointing out that um, uh, yeah, a great dragon's attack was uh, the new one is typeless. I believe I thought it was his old move is whoosh, but I think the new one must be typeless marshals so yeah like really not almost nothing is mitigating that um that's yeah that must be um so wait 
the um, stupid metal dragon is actually getting a his thing is typeless marshal. It's not whoosh. That's what Chad is saying, and that kind of re- I don't remember. Um, okay, yeah, I'll believe it. Um, Gray yeah. dragon get hit over one point two k. Brilliant using his new fan shaped breath. I mean that sounds. Well, awesome. a missile doesn't really make sense to be wind damage anyway. I don't think so. I mean, uh, but, you, yeah, you I can, mean, so you can make it work. So anyway, I mean, we got uh, sidetracked, but yeah, is anything better than this great this metal dragon? I mean, great dragon's going to be insane too. Um, Elzer was saying, um, oh yeah, you know the thing about Squidzilla is I was saying like that's a strong physical hit. Like let's not look that too quickly. We forgot what uh, Squidzilla has on him already. Squidzilla's got a ch- uh, an inherent chance for a double attack buff, so that guy could be going around easily with an extra thirty percent attack buff. And doing that, you know, zoom around uh, big physical line hit. So, um, I, he, uh, I don't know. He's more into the JP scene, and he said that Squidzilla is actually one of the more broken out of the bunch. I could believe it, but I could believe it. it, it, it he's not as exciting on paper. Yeah. Yeah, I, I, I have to see it. But it's like this is. I don't want to. I don't want to get into the negatives already. But like this kind of doubles down on the quote-unquote orb issue, but I don't think the orb issue is going to be as much of an issue going forward, I think. Because I, I don't, hope. personally, I don't plan on pulling on as many units, right? Like, the orb issue yeah. is an issue when I have more and more new units. But as I'm like, alright, I'm going to skip these banners because I don't have a, you know, I don't want to spend money on this as much. You know, I have my good team now, and now I'm going to do maybe one unit a month or one unit every other month. Um, Like, now it's like, I, but like, if it's like, oh, hey, Metal Dragon, Squidzilla, these and you know Hybrid or whatever else it is. These units are gonna be good. I was like, well, now I need like six orbs to get these units to be good, you know, um, it's because I don't have orbs in them right now. And but now yeah. I also I uh, need orbs for Sorrow. I need I need orbs for a bunch of things. So I mean, yeah, two. We two better get orbs. we better get two orbs this month, right? Like if we don't get two orbs in June, it'll be crazy. And I think we will, but like. Why we must be? I will be shocked if Summer Event Part Two doesn't start next week. I don't know why it didn't start this week because there was nothing in Summer Event Part One. Like, wh- what did we actually get? We got new hard mode chapter stories and a login bonus. I I fully expected about three days of only having what what they gave us, and then within a week we would have it. Now I'm worried that we're actually going to the 14th, which is uh, why. The fourteenth for sure. They have plenty I think. content. Hmm? I think for sure they're not doing anything before the fourteenth now. Well, that's what it seems now, and plus we have no way to know. I mean, there's, uh, you know, the Twitter is it's nice, it's better than nothing, but that's about it. We don't really get any information there. I'm actually, you know, we talked we touched on this a while ago. Um, I'm actually of, of the opinion that the roadmap really didn't give us much. Um. We knew that Dragon Quest Four was coming. That was right before that came that they gave us. The hard modes, it was nice to have it in writing, but we also knew about that. Um, they didn't even announce the DQ5 event, but that's obviously the event in July, unless they're going to throw a curveball. Um, but uh, honestly, uh, it really, all it told us was that they were splitting up hard chapters 1 and 2 and 3 and 4, which did happen in JP, was just harder to tell, really, on the wiki. I will say, um, we have different perspectives, because I didn't know anything coming out in Japan, right? I don't know any of the oh. events ahead of time, so it was all news to me. Okay. Sorry, you're, I think you're, well, maybe not in the minority, but yeah, like, a- a- any of the tryhards are looking ahead a little bit. And, like, I uh, just, I don't know, to me, I don't know why I'm so against it, but it's like, it's my least favorite thing oops. about the game, is forward yeah. knowledge. Because that's your thing, man. Yeah. Well, it, it just, it, I don't know. It's, it's hard to, I, I like talking about the casual everyday player in the game, but the thing is our community is not that big of a game in general. And it's yeah. likely that our casual players are way more advanced than the average game because of the smaller size, right? Like it's a, there's a chance that the average casual player is not as hardcore as we are, but is way more hardcore than the average player of an average gotcha, you know? Um, and so maybe they are looking forward, but like most, in most situations, most games, most people aren't going to be going online and even watching content. They're going to be just doing this on their phone, you know, while they're using the toilet or something and let alone, um, following Japan, seeing what's coming up in the future. 
Yeah, you know, that's a really weird thing because, yeah, the, the people that even watch content, this is more about us being YouTubers, uh, you know, you, me, uh, emulating. Uh, but, um, yeah, there are at least 10,000 people that do Arena every week, uh, between 10,000 and 30,000. We know that for active Arena participation, for the most part, unless there's some kind of, I don't know, maybe they're lying about numbers and the maybe they're smart enough to lie. But then again, I would think they would make it look more impressive than only going to the in the 30,000 sphere. But yeah, let's say anyway. there's 30,000 people doing arena. They're not watching YouTube yeah. videos on the game. Yeah. I can't I mean, like who plays a gotcha? It takes up like gotcha takes up a lot of your time. You play this game every day. You I can't imagine. I mean, maybe I'm weird for thinking that I need to watch YouTube videos about it, but like dude, even just subscribing to get like the headlines or like watching the occasional video like our viewer base is almost nothing now. I think like, your average videos are probably getting, what, 500? Uh, you're not getting many over 1,000 views anymore, right? No, no, no. 1,000 is would be, like, a great video. Yeah, because, I mean, it keeps going down for you, right? I, I could take a look. Let's take an actual look at my analytics. Okay. My views I are... I was having... So, it, it's very, yeah. very warped because I'm streaming on YouTube, and my YouTube views on my streams count towards my overall views now. So it says that I'm up like 50% because I've moved from Twitch to YouTube. So we'll see what it is going in the future. Um, but right. like, yeah, my view, my views are like, let's take a look. Can you guys see here? Um, th 300, 500, 250, 470, 205, 227, um, 613. So yeah, nothing's breaking 1,000. Let's see, the last video to break 1,000 was a my hero game uh video and then the last one dragon quest was sorrow is here and like this is why i do these videos right like this video sorrow is here the dq4 final update it's eight minutes of me just talking about what's in the update and mm -hmm. um and it's like do me just talking about like oh here's the notice let's read the notice because this is gets my it gets the most views i don't know why yeah. But, like, I mean, if people watch it and they like it and they click that like button, it means that they want to see it. So that's why I do, like, it's the lowest effort content and it gets the most views. Yeah, well, that's in the last couple of, gosh, in the last three weeks, the last time I had a video with over 500 views was uh, my Elena review, with the exception of Orochi's Cave of Predatory Bullshit. <laughs> that got a little over a few days ago. But, yeah, most of my videos are sitting two to 300 views and... Again, like, yeah, you're a bigger YouTuber than me, but your your numbers aren't much bigger than mine. And that's, we are, you, the Mad Group makes some videos. Um, he's good, but uh, who, I think, who, I, I mean, think that's Lolliet's it. has been out for the last, I don't think Lolliet's made a video in the last week or two. Yeah, I'm, I would never try to diss Lolliet. Uh, I, I love Lolliet. He helped me so much, but he's done. I'm pretty, he hasn't told me that he's done, but I mean, when was the last time he made a video? He's, he's done. I would be happy to see him come back. It's not a competition between us, but. Oh no! I mean, you and I are it for YouTube, other than Mad. Yeah, Laliette is a uh, uh, my homie for sure. If he didn't yeah. have a wife, we'd hang out way more. I'm not blaming his wife. I'm just saying he has a life. You know, if he didn't have a life, you know, uh, yeah. I bet me and him would hang out way more because I really enjoy. I tried talking calling him. him. The, those stupid kids of his were a mistake. They take up all his time. But hey, he, ag he agrees. He agrees. Yeah, <laughs> he, he can't say it, but he agrees. I hope people understand sarcasm. That's going to be like, dude, Chase has a huge problem with Lolly. He says he hates his kids. <laughs> hey, listen, I don't know his kids, but all I know is they're taking my friend away from me. And so they, you know, you step on my toes, I step on yours. Fuck those guys. Meet me in the parking lot. <laughs> See what happens. Uh, apparently Lolly is some, somebody that we do not want to meet in the parking lot. He's uh, he's like real life Wolverine. He's 5'6", but he will just beat your ass. And then I'm just like, oh, okay, you're going to send your dad to fight for you, you little shit? Oh, now, by the I way, for those who don't pay attention to everything, Lalia is literally a cage fighter, was. But uh, you hold on to some of that. So, yeah, don't um, don't make fun of Lalia for being short, because he'll still bend you in half. <laughs> yeah, yeah, Lalia would kick my ass, there's no doubt. Um, But yeah, as far as content creator, like... Or the stepladder, yeah. It's just, it's what's weird is, like, not only does this game have like a semi-small audience and it has a really really small content creator you know like group right almost yeah. like and see we're lucky we're getting new people that are in here right insane mm. is making videos constantly um insane yeah. doesn't speak english he says but like his videos are very good very helpful um mm. 
so like we have like a, a kind of a new generation of content creators, you know, kind of coming up, which is awesome. And I really like it, but like, it's also weird. Like, I swear to God, this is the only game where the company doesn't reach out to the content creators about anything like at all. Yeah. Like, I don't have yeah, any insider uh, information. I mean, like I can understand. Yeah, I don't know. It's just weird. Welcome PM me a couple of times. I could PM him anytime and he's pretty good about getting back. But, um, Again, yeah. I'm I'm not trying to insult him as a person personally. He seems fine, he seems nice. I also don't want to tick him off just in case I don't want to end a line of communication, but he I I, I think it's him having his hands tied so much by Square, but he can't do much. He hasn't done much. It's now he's the face that we complain to and that's about it. Well, I mean, um, his, I don't think his job is to change things. I think his job is yeah. to communicate changes. Yeah, and I uh, I understand. I, I have to remind myself of that. I, I misworded that, but uh, I don't I don't feel like. Well, yeah, I mean, not that he's going to be able to do things, but I mean, like, I don't feel like it changed much, like with him coming public, basically. The Twitter is way more active, which is nice, but I do wish it was way more active with relevant information to the game. I mean, oh, yeah. it, it is relevant, but it's like, I don't know. Like, I I understand like. Because it is like, oh, a Rochi event. Like, it's what? It's a week old. It's not like it's old content, right? But, like... We need to start getting sneak peeks, too. I, I, went, I think I talked about this last week. I know I've talked about this other places. Um, Just the DQ35 event was the big, best, biggest example. That was such a waste. Uh, if they had teased that a few days before, a week before, uh, had some kind of leak or a little hint or whatever, uh, a wink-wink... We would all have been excited and talking about it and speculating. Instead, it, we logged in, we got our free stuff, and 10 minutes later, we didn't give a shit. Like, imagine if this stupid Cave of Trials thing, maybe not this one, but like, if there's like, hey, make sure to tune in next week for all new content, and it just has like a silhouette of a monster that maybe we do or don't know. And it's like, a, a, and a silhouette of like some rewards. Like, I don't know, does anything just be like, it'll get the content creators talking, right? It'll make, we'll make a video telling people to make sure they're there next week. Um, yeah, I it just, I don't know. Like, I don't know why that, yeah, sneak peeks are just like, no one gives a shit. Yeah. It, no one, sorry, no one, no one's going to be like spoiled. Like, oh, this ruins my experience. It just positives. Like Doken has leaks all the time. Like, I don't know where they come from. I don't, I don't know, but say there was a leak of the DQ 35 ticket and that's all like, yeah, it's it like a screenshot like a fake data miner or whatever. Like we just found the, the files for this ticket that's coming next week, what does this mean? And we'd just be all like, whoa, whoa, what? what? What does this mean? Like, we would just be going back and forth speculating. Heard the argument like, oh, well, people will get overhyped. We, no, nobody's going to get, like, it'll happen. People is, get is, overhyped for is anything. Anyone's but... actually, is there anyone giving you that argument that someone that will get overhyped? Yeah, uh, I don't think so. I, okay, because well, like that—that's like I, I bring I bring out the worst in Discord. I I'm not very liked I, by everyone there because I think that's like um an extra bad argument because it it depends on how they do it, right? They're not gonna be like yeah. groundbreaking changes next week. Like they're just like, hey, here's a sneak peek at content coming out next week. No one's gonna be like, finally, they're fixing all the problems. No, oh, I'm let down. No, it's like no, they're just they know there's gonna be some new stages to do or something. That's it. Well, because I brought it up, I, I talked about it before, I brought it up directly with Malcolm, I'm like, there's got to be more hype with this game, there's got to be some leaks, there's got to be spoilers, etc. Er, early, um, not access necessarily, but just early information, and he's like, well, sometimes those can go wrong too, and I'm like, what's, I, I didn't say it to him, but I mean, we all know, I mean, back to gloom and doom, what's there to lose? What, what are players going to leave? They fucking are, like... <laughs> I mean, I think um, I feel like everyone's kind of. Right I feel like everyone's kind of that's playing the game is kind of stuck to the game now. Not like, like literally, yes. but like I agree I, with that. I don't yeah. feel like people are. I don't feel like the game's growing, but I don't really feel like it's shrinking. I think we've kind of got our audience, and we're kind of just sitting in the same thing, doing the same thing. I think there's a lot of room to grow. Like obviously, Dragon Quest is a worldwide famous thing, even if it's not the most famous game in the West. Like. You, people love the monsters and stuff. Just like put some slimes on some things, put some like put some advertisement out there. You know, they're they're not put they're not pushing this game out there at all. They want it to be, you know, word of mouth and you know, believe, like I and you potentially have the biggest influence 
you know, Kage and Nib have a podcast and stuff like, so they're absolutely, you know, building their influence as well. But like, I don't have a, we have, we can't fucking reach people outside of our bubble and our bubble is people that already play the game. And like, we need a company, you know, to come in and help push this stuff. Mm. Like I got, yeah. I got, yeah, I got a couple thousand subscribers, but like you said, our views aren't that different. Maybe I get like 20% more views. Maybe even not. Your videos are doing pretty good recently, you know? So I, uh, I actually kind of like, uh, n- Cause I do my own podcast and then Kage makes a podcast. That's all about me. So it's actually kind of flattering as I've, um, I look at, I won't lie. I haven't watched it because it, it, you're like, not missing out. It's a, Sorry. Conf, it's a conflict of interest. Well, we can't bad mouth another person's podcast. I want everyone here to watch that podcast and like it more than ours, but well, also I don't want to like, I don't want to tell you, I don't like, want to take first episode was them telling people why they're wrong to not be in love with dragon quest act. Because um, I'm, I, well, do you want to touch on the this uh, attitude among, I'll say it's a minority of the Discord, but this attitude that you're not allowed to say anything bad about tact. I get really tired of that, obviously. Listen, I can't agree because I've not been shy. I I don't talk that much about the negatives, but I, I just don't have that problem when I talk about yeah. things I don't like. People are usually like, true, Platt gets it. And I'm like, I I don't I don't know the difference. Look, I I've been alienated. I don't understand why people are so bugged when you say it. I think people are just not as good as interpreting what. Like I don't I like I I really don't get it. Like I hear what you say, I think I'm, and I know what you I mean. Think too, I think I'm too good looking to be likable. I think that's my problem. Yeah, like I don't I think, think I think other males are opinionated by how handsome I am. If I thought you just turned them off. If I thought you hate attacked and you just bitched about the game all the time and you thought, you know, you're just determined to kill the game, like obviously I wouldn't want to do a podcast with you. Um, <laughs> I just don't think that's what you do. Like I watch your videos and I even if you say people that do Orochi trials unless you're a whale are idiots. I'm like I don't Not you. Yeah. I don't I hear that and I don't hear you calling individual people idiots. What I hear is like this is an inefficient you know, use of your resources unless you're doing it for clout, you know? And I, I like, I kind of rescinded that. I'm like, that was, I said afterwards, I'm like, that's too mean. That's not necessarily what I mean. Cause again, we talked about this a little while ago. We do this one cut. I don't have a fucking script, man. Like I'm just free balling. <laughs> you know? Yeah. I, I think you just, I, I think that you, was just my way of saying it's an inefficient use of Stam. Look, like, I, t- I talk in absolutes when I'm off camera or, I mean, I tend to yeah. accidentally talk in, um, absolutes and i think uh maybe you just communicate too strongly like i don't think so but obviously i'm in the minority here um like maybe just communicate too strongly um right out the gate like when i when i'm trying to talk about things that i actually want to change or whatever like i pause a lot more you know when i talk i'm like all right what what are what's the word i'm gonna use uh like uh like maybe someone is uh you know, not pro- like if instead of saying like it's un it's dumb to do the Orochi thing, I might be like, if someone's spending their stamina on the Orochi fight, I think they may not have done the math to realize that it's an inefficient use of their resources at this time. You know, just I don't know. I I can't even give advice. I I feel like I could talk shit about the game, and I feel like I do. I point out problems. I mean, I, I've on every podcast that me and Laliette ever did. I brought up how bad the monetization is. The monetization is shit. And that I think that they need a battle pass or they need to like the, I don't like the tack point system that much because it's just, a, it's not a weekly reward. It's a Sunday reward, you know, for most players. And if it's not even most players, it's really a, you know, Sunday, Monday, Tuesday, like th- halfway through the week, everyone's done with their tack points for the whole week. And if you get the metal card, it's even less time. Yeah. You get more points, but it actually fills up faster. And then, yeah. Drives you crazy when you get the regular one and it's like, it's not fucking full yet? Like, what is going on? Yeah, it, it's <laughs> just like, so it just, there's nothing to, there, there's no middle ground spenders. Like, the game is super free to play friendly. Like, I can compliment the game all day. um, But, like, the monetization is particularly bad. And I don't, per- I personally also don't like that the amount of orbs we're getting. If we get two orbs a month, I think that's at least acceptable. I think three would be ideal. Cause that's enough to get a new unit every month and start to upgrade your older units. Um, it's just so much. Well, I mean, three orbs, it's only covers like we're getting three banner units a month now that need two of them. So 
Um, yeah, I, I don't think we need to incentivize non-spenders to try to pull on more than one unit a month. Like, if you're going to mm. try to pull on three units a month, you're probably just, like, I don't mind saying, like, hey, if you want two or three units every month, you're going to need to buy the orbs as well. I'm like, all right, that's fine. It's not my favorite way that they do it, but I'm not, like, upset by it. But for, like, yeah, a free-to-play player, I think you should have three orbs a month. You should be able to, if you get lucky, you know, in a month, you should be able to upgrade the new unit you got lucky with. And I do like the, I so two minimum. And then the third is like, all right, well, I've got this night clubber at S4. It would be cool to get him up to S5, you know, and then maybe next month he goes up to S6. Um, I just, I mean, here's, here's the thing about orbs. I mean, we've talked about this before, but may, maybe I didn't word it this way is um, like, it's, there is value in like, okay. You enjoy that. You can't like just max rank all of your box at once. But there is definitely downside to it, and the downside is against the basic gotcha principle is that they should be making banners multiple times a month, that, like at least once a month. They want they should want us to summon on every banner. Yeah, I mean, and the orb system makes that a bad idea. Why would they do that? It's it's factually a bad practice. Like it's not even opinion. Like from Square's point of view, it's really stupid. I think they battled it a little bit. I, I, I do agree that, like, we don't want to pull on every banner every month as oh. as spenders and content creators. I still don't want to pull on every banner because I won't be able to use all the units because I, there's no way I'm going to be able to max all these units out. Like, I haven't even maxed out I've my not Sorrow. I Lionheart for anything. I, I, I did a full stamp card on Sar uh, sorry, Slyonheart. I've never used them. Um, the Queen Slime helped me a little bit in the... Uh, the Pyramid EX, which actually just didn't mean shit. Like, I... Who who cares if you didn't clear py Pyramid EX? Um, and then, yeah, so I regret everything I spent in the second month of the game. Really? <laughs> um, so. But, like, I, I think, like, because even... I can't even max out my Sorrow, let alone if I ever got Elena or I got Kirill this month. I wouldn't be able to max them out triply because mm -hmm. I already can't max out my Sorrow. Um, yeah, but beyond, I, I do think they combat it a little bit where I think they kind of like the better the S rank is, they kind of, um, sorry, the worse the S rank is, they kind of give you like a good a rank, right? They give you kind of a reason where mm. like, all right, I may not want Elena, but I do want armored scorpion, right? I may not want Kirill that much. Um, cause he's the most unwanted unit this month, but it, I do want Bodkin yeah. Bower. That guy's really good. Um, so like, I, I don't think it's like like a pure answer to the issues that you stated. But I do think like they, they try to combat it at least a little bit by giving, because most banners I feel like in other gotchas will have like a banner unit and then maybe an increased rate on S's or something in general, but they have like a, they have like a second banner unit in every banner. So they kind of have uh, two ways to um, get you per banner. Yeah, that's for sure. That's uh, it's the only thing that makes me consider going back to buying the metal card again is that it is good in acquiring banner A ranks, but I feel like it gets me nowhere on banner S ranks, the, the metal card. Um, oh, but that's what I made my video about today. I'll grant about that some other day. Yeah, yeah. I, I think that they need to... Um, the attack points need to increase the... You need the cap to be, like, at least let it go. Well, increase the cap and or just let it go to pity. Like, just let it count for the stamp card. That's pretty much what my video is about. It's like... I, maybe I brought this up somewhere else. They look at it like, let's say you can get halfway through a stamp card for free if they allow this. They see that as losing 15,000 gems that somebody would spend on the game. I see it as like, dude, if I got halfway through a stamp card for free, I'm going to think about finishing it with paid gems, you know? For sure. Like, well, here's the thing, because you still need 10 stamps, right? Or 10, 10 tickets, yeah. I assume? And that's only so for, that's not even for the banner unit. That's for a guaranteed... You yeah, know, you so, can, if yeah, you're buying it, the metal card and you look at a six week banner and you, you're like, okay, between like the, the scout tickets they give us and then saving up 20,000 well, and yeah, then getting like 70,000 tact points through the event, you can get like a free stamp card with tact points and free scout tickets. But like, dude, okay. So two months worth of your tact points and tickets give you. Uh, just a free S rank. That's not even the banner unit necessarily. That's not a big fucking deal. Let's take a look. So this banner oh, yeah, was good. Um, I don't know when it started, but the Elena banner. But you'd only get for a free to play player, you'd get one stamp every two weeks, right? You get five thousand a yeah. week. 
Every two weeks, you'd get one stamp. So if something was eight weeks long, which I think would be long, you're probably looking at more to six weeks for a long banner. You're probably getting three stamps free to play off your tack points. Mm -hmm. And then maybe yeah. an additional stamp if they give you 10 ticket pulls for login rewards. Um, yeah. So that means you'd only be like one paid away from a guaranteed A rank. And they'd only be like, yeah, I mean, people would take it, would finish stamps more frequently, right? I don't yeah I I mean I don't see I don't even know why it's not like we could buy tickets with in-game gold like the only way to get the tickets is based off what they give us so they could balance the tickets they give us to make it so it's usable with stamps mm. Oh by the way uh you might need to pay attention to your chat for a second Yeah a cream pie yeah cream pie asked if he could use the n word it depends on the n word he's talking about of course uh, but I, don't I don't know if if you know him. Otherwise, maybe you just want to silence him. I don't know. <laughs> we'll, we'll we'll take a. I don't know I, if we play Minority Report here, where we punish people for crimes they may commit. But <laughs> no, no, no. I, I don't punish people for crimes they may commit. People, you know what? As long as Cream Pie Lars is a good guy here, he has a spot here. Plus, YouTube doesn't YouTube like censor that in their chat? Can you? I, I, say I that? assume so. I don't have any censors in my chat, but people mm. have gotten. Uh, their message blocked all the time from YouTube based off saying weird words that aren't even like, like aren't remotely okay. bad. Yeah. Just because I have, my stream is probably terribly formatted right now. I've got the chat coming up the middle, which is probably really stupid, but I, I wanted us to be side by side and not um on top of each other. It's, I'm know, not like even, we I'm not even watching. Friday. Giggity. Um, but uh, yeah, my, my, I've got my chat uh, like in the middle of the screen and I wouldn't want profanity like that on stream anyway uh yeah hey uh i don't remember if we're in the middle of something do you want to go uh do you want to look at our patrons real quick yeah do we have more than one first of all uh lewis reminded me of it because he complained that i was i always make fun of him on my stream and i just wanted to take a second to tell lewis to get the fuck out of here because nobody wants you around we have three patrons uh, yes we have three first of all the the most handsome one is mason Mason, um, yeah, he's I've my heard good favorite things. patron. He's got um, yeah, massive genitals, from what I've heard. Massive. Thank you for going that to the same time that I was going to. Our second patron, by the way, I'm not. I I applied to the Patreon like five minutes before at Lolly. It was like, hey, do you want to run this piece of shit? I'm out. So, uh, <laughs> so he's like, I'm I just can't put up with Platt anymore. That fucking egotistical maniac. That was about it. So the uh, the first real one was Colin. Uh, so thank you, Colin. Um, he I know he goes by Colin in Discord, so I think that's the name he wants to use. Um, and then uh, just the other day, uh, I don't know if you know. Yeah, we got three now. We have Rye. Um, am I a jerk? Did is he more in your streams than mine? Rye doesn't ring a bell. Rye does not ring a bell to glad me. To have you as a patron anyway. It's very likely Rye has a different name. Um, based, I'm looking yeah. at their uh, email, and their name is also. It looks like it might have Colin in it. Uh, yeah. So maybe it's Colin time. Maybe it's Colin again. I don't know. Maybe not. Maybe just coincidence. Which, you know, let's use that to shame the stream. Okay, Colin is he's patroning twice, and you assholes haven't even done it once. Shame. Uh, I think we have to put it on Spotify now, right? Is that our that we hit our goal? Oh wait, I got a message also on the Dragon Quest oh. Tech podcast from. Take a look, from right. Oh yeah, I asked him what he wanted to be called, and plus I I messaged him like literally right before this. Cool, cool, cool. Uh, um, oh yeah, yeah. Okay, maybe that was uh maybe that was you. I was right. We're probably gonna see the same messages because we're as a shared Patreon. Um, yeah. For four, I, I don't remember what our goal was. Was it fifteen dollars a month or ten dollars a month? I think was to get it on Spotify. So if you don't want to put oh, it on Spotify, it, you better um you better Does it count if I am one? Yeah, yeah, no, it's fifteen dollars a month. We're seventy five cents short. So the next two we get, assuming that you cancel yours to your own podcast. Um <laughs> it, once we get two more patrons at the five dollar tier, we'll put it on Spotify. That way you guys can just listen okay. to it. Okay. Oh, by the way, Rye did respond. He says he enjoyed the podcast so far. Yes. All right, we have a fan. I don't know about these guys in chat, but at least Rye likes us. Um, yeah, Rye like the bread on Discord and uh, Riley on YouTube. So Riley, Rye, Rye guy, Riley, um, you are our like second real patron. So uh, thank you. 
We appreciate it. You know what? I'm really excited for this podcast to take off because I I think next week we might need to talk about something like just Dragon Quest related. Because like, what the fuck? Mm. Like, well, okay, maybe we'll have TAC news next week, but like, we don't have news every week for TAC. There's not always something going on yeah. in the world of TAC. Hopefully next week is the exception. Yeah. But um, yeah, there's not much to talk about. I mean, when there's nothing to talk about, when it comes to me, I just start whining, so... Well, I just like um that. That's we can start doing more question stuff, but also we can just talk about Dragon Quest in general. I don't know. Like, I might start a playthrough of something, or maybe we can just like, oh, let's talk about Dragon Quest Four. You know, just like have a podcast about Dragon Quest Four or something. By the way, all right. So just dr general Dragon Quest things. I showed this off to you a couple of weeks. Ago. It's probably pretty lame, but I was I was going through old stuff. I found my old Game Boy Color Dragon Warrior One and Two box. Mm -hmm. I know the. Like the cartridges around somewhere. The cartridge isn't in here. I was excited. I found the box, like, and it's in like great condition too. And I open it up, and it still has like, all, like I was an anal kid. Like, mm, I, I yeah. loved anal as a kid. No, um, I have like everything in it. So I was like super happy to see that. I will probably like read the instruction manual later. I love reading instruction <laughs> manuals. It's not nerdy. It's cool. Dude, I wouldn't start a game before I read the instruction manual. Before I like, it it, it was. It was like a parent forced me when I was a kid. Like, oh, do you want to do you want to go play your new game? It's like, no, I haven't finished reading the instruction manual yet. How can I play it? Well, it's also extra awesome because, like, as a kid, you had to go get a game, right? You couldn't just be home or whatever. Um, you so did to decide by the game's cover if it was good. Yeah, it, it was like on the car ride home. I'd be like, oh yeah, I'm gonna read this whole instruction manual, and that was like my favorite part. Yeah, I, I love that shit. Let's see if I can auto this. I'm just gonna. I'm not even gonna try. I have so much stamina, I don't even care. But, uh, let me see. So, uh, yeah, the, the summer, I can't, I'm, I can't imagine what's coming next with Summerfest, uh, because we literally have no information, uh, and again, I've heard a couple of people backing up that we're getting Juliante, but I don't know what celebration they think we're emulating from Japan, because they didn't have, it, this is their first summer, so Do we're you, sure as hell not their you stuff. reach out to Malcolm and ask for sneak peeks? Have you done that? I uh not I haven't bothered because I know that there's no chance. Have you? I I, I, I'm about I told to you right I know from like two weeks ago. I'm like, you realize that you gotta start like getting some hints, some spoilers, some leaks or something out there. Like we need something more than a shitty Twitter post like twelve hours before the event comes out. Uh peaks for future but events like he, next. He pretty much week. just says everything is NDA. Right now, like, well, you need to tell Square to change its NDA policy. No info. Get something. We have no info about what is coming next week, and I think the game, or I think the community, community could use a little hype. Oh my God, he's watching. Okay, Malcolm. Malcolm, Wait, did right, he I wanna... tell you that he was watching, or yeah, you can no, just tell he's I, I, I was typing him a message, and before I hit enter, he already. Uh, like, I'm watching, watching the bro. Podcast. I fucking know what you're saying. All right. Uh, Malcolm, I think, I can't confirm it, but rumor has it that his dick is at least 10 inches. Um, and, and honestly, uh, not only the greatest communicator that I've ever met, but also the greatest human being, straight up. All right, cream pie. Listen, <laughs> I'm going to block it. Okay, good. Thank you. I'm going to report your message for unwanted commercial content or we'll just say hate speech there we go youtube will just ban that they don't even need a reason yeah uh, um yeah that's why I, I i i don't know i sometimes i feel bad reaching out to malcolm because it's like i'm i'm just the negative guy <laughs> but i'm not the know. negative guy. I, just, right. I want this game to do better like i feel like some of the moves it needs to make are so obvious so it gets frustrating yeah uh, so joking like aside like I obviously I think the monetization of this game needs work. There, there's a, I can make a list of things that I think the game needs to improve on, but really what the biggest issue I think probably comes down to as a, as a casual player or not, not even casual, but like uh, monetization from the business side, I'm happy with the monetization. The only reason I'm not happy with it is because I think it, the monetization to stay now it is will cause the game to be less successful than it needs to be, which will cause less support, blah, 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 that kind of stuff. Um, yeah, but I, I think cutting I think, off your nose to fight your face. I think. I like, think for the player base, though, we need 
communication in terms of like hype. And I know like, again, hands are tied. Of course, they're not going to let you say, and, and like, and I, I even have more sympathy because not only is he not allowed to say anything, but he can also be like, just look at Japan, bro. Like the, it, the, it's there. They already, we already know what we're going to get, but like having things, I don't want to make videos hyping things that we may or may not get, you know? Um, yeah. I, I, I just having like, like, Hey, next, just tweet out. Like, I don't, I know you can't, but if we can find a way to make it, where it's like in the, in seven days from now, event part two has come and look forward to this reward, this thing, just to give us, because right now we're kind of sitting here. Like not only is there nothing to do in the game right now, we don't even know when there will be something to do in the game before in June, we have everything on the June roadmap already, you know? And by as, the way, that reminds me, like, I, I know this is only a couple pe people gave me shit for hyping up Orochi. And, and then like, well, you hyped it up. And then you said the uh, event was bullshit. I'm like, how the hell was I supposed to know? Like things get lost in translation. So even when we think we know what's coming, because like maybe the other there's like game eight and then game with i always go to game with i know how to navigate that one for the most part but it doesn't give us every bit of info like it gives us like guidelines almost like you know it's i don't know like some of the moves i can't even tell what they're gonna do because like you get english at best <laughs> yeah i mean and like i would i wanted to hype their roach event I don't even know when it was announced, but like, I was really excited for it. I was super excited and I still like, like it, but it's like, I'm not going to, I'm right this week until there's an equipment event. I'm not going to spend stamina on it. Really? Like I want books, you know, did we do, mm -hmm. I, did, yeah. I did the thing. Yeah. Go, go me. Um, but yeah, it's like, I want books and shit. So it's not even worth doing right now. And even if I do it, like, it's going to be really hard to get a Rochi. And even if I get a Rochi, I am going to have a zero awake in a Rochi that I'm probably not going to use. So it, it's like, hmm. it feels purely for clout right now, you know? And that's, there are, uh, there are players that are, are just fine going, if you can afford to waste, I feel like you're probably, the harder levels, you're probably wasting just as much as you spend on it. I think, especially once you get to stage nine or 10, I would imagine that your success rate is probably only around 50%. It's definitely not a hundred percent. You can tell me maybe it's 70 or 80, maybe that's possible, but, um, you still you still have to like avoid crits, land blunt, uh, hit envenomate, etc. Like, there's just so many things that can go wrong that are completely one hundred percent out of your control. Um, yeah, so I mean, if you can, if wasting four hundred stamina isn't a big deal for you, um, that's fine. But yeah, the, just the average player, you're you're only looking at a head start on the event. Like that's it. You're looking at a head start on Orochi. So just yeah. But yeah, and so that's the only content we got this week. Uh, we, we've been running around in circles, but very disappointing. I thought this was a Summerfest lead-up event. If this is actually Summerfest, I, I, why? What is this? Um, it's like, yeah, I don't know. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I just, this guy just keeps talking about, like, look, look at it. I didn't want to tell you what to do, but I was like, yeah, you need to just kick him out. <laughs> I'll, I'll, like you could stay. You get you get one more warning. Uh, but just don't. We're not talking about politics right now. That's all it is. You know, mm -hmm. when you're in chat, just keep it semi relevant to what the topics at hand. That's that's uh, the main you're goal. To me. I, I've never okay. banned anyone, so I prefer not to ban it. But still, oh, okay. Anyway, <laughs> um, um, let me see. What else do we want to touch on? Yes, uh, Malcolm says, um, thus far, nothing oh. more than a roadmap is allowed. I'll just say, um, okay. Which the, he'll, he'll the roadmap say, nearly run its course now, so. Yeah, so Malcolm will say that we currently have not started, so he'll just say this. He, I assume he knows I'm going to say this because he's watching the thing and he's doing it. But he's like, based off the roadmap yeah. and current event name, this is not Summerfest. The event going on at the moment is the summer event kickoff. Okay. Let me look at the wording again because it's really it's very poor. I feel, but maybe I'm just a dummy. Most take, people would probably agree with that. Let's go notice. I mean, look at again with like translation and stuff. Like I'm not always going to split hairs. Um, yeah. Look at announcing four campaigns to kick off summer. So even though we had a roadmap that said Summerfest, it seems like this may not be Summerfest. Um, specifically. So we're probably going to get something on the 14th. I don't even remember why we thought the 14th. I think it's because something... Yeah, yeah, yeah. 
Um, th these things, these things last until the 14th. So this will, after this, we'll probably get a banner is my guess. Cause you're not, they're not going to go a month without a banner, right? That just doesn't make any sense. in it got you. Uh, yeah, no, I wouldn't think so. Although, I mean, there's a bunch of things up right now. It's just that none of them were new to this event. Uh, although, I mean, Saro is still, how long has Saro been up? Like three weeks now? I don't know. Uh, the banners are all, like, I actually kind of like how long the banners will last. It does mean that we get a lot of, like, overlapping banners, but, like, um, oh, like, yeah. the, really, wrong with that. the really, really cool units, like Saro and, like, Zoma, like, Zoma was only down for, like, two weeks, or I sort of got, like, maybe a month, but, like, Zoma was up for, like, almost half the length of the game so far. And mm. we have the rest of this month to pull on Saro still, so, like, all of our tack points, like, I'm going to get another 20 pulls on Saro still. Mm. I would love to, uh, since he's listening, he can just message you. I would love to get something on Malcolm from Malcolm on when events will come back. Um, I mean, even, a, even Japan doesn't have event units again, right? Like, that was one of the big that's things. That's what I'm saying. They don't like, have King what, Bubble what Slime still. New, what do you tell a new player right now? Like, oh, well, how do I get that King Bubble Slime? It's like, well, not only do we have to wait if they do implement events returning, it'll be at least six months on top of that, too, maybe. So... Yeah, there's a, it's a. I don't like. I I like the I like the FOMO aspect of having, like, oh, it's cool. I got to get this unit in this time. Let's grind it. It's fun. I got it in time. It's cool. But knowing that there's not like um, I kind of wish they had a different system where it was like um, after the event period is ended, it will take a different resource or a more expensive amount of resources to grind. Like maybe like there's a. Maybe they become fearsome foes, right? Like, because we have a fearsome foe thing that only has two units that no one gives a shit about. Like, do you even remember mm -hmm. this? Do you even remember this? If we come here to, um, is it an event? Yeah, fearsome foe. God, I forgot about that. Is it in events? And it's, uh, uh, it's gotta be. Oh, it's bounty quest. Bounty quest. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, so here we only have two units no one gives a shit about. So, like, they could, the event units could go here and maybe the stages cost like 40 stamina, something stupid because you missed out. Um, like, I don't know, there's a way to get it. Like, because it still has the FOMO, because you don't want to spend an insane amount of resources to get the units, but it also doesn't completely cock block everyone that's ever, you know, not played the game yeah, during they, that time. They did that with uh, Wordle putting him into the hard mode, hard mode story. It's not the best way to get him, and it's slowed, but um, you can get him now, you know? But in a way, I feel like I'm just yelling into an echo chamber, like, like they already yeah. uh, like it's unfortunate. This is one of the things that I dislike most about having a Japan and a global not being in sync. Like, yeah, there's some advantages. I don't want to dis. I don't want to say that being able to look forward isn't an advantage. Of course it is. But being able to look forward also means we know that they're not going to make any changes, right? Because they're not making. Yeah. They already have it done. Like in other games, when the community gets together and demands changes, like you can usually get changes to happen. Uh, but this is like, yeah. we already are six months behind. They're going to fall. Like, maybe they'll make minor changes. Like, they did launch uh, the Dragon Quest 35th anniversary globally. We got a slightly worse event than they did. But, like, that was something that they didn't get at this point in the game, right? So that's a little bit different. Um, so th there's, like, some slight changes and things are kind of moving around here. But, like, nothing significant has changed. Um, and I don't think anything yeah. significant will change, whether we give them advice or not. Like, are they going to change the monetization? There's no fucking way. They're not going to change something. Like, I think that I think they need to. I think they need to yeah. add something that'll make Global stand out from Japan and make it so understand that it's a different audience for a different, uh, you know, economic background and that there's a way larger negative uh, connotation with spending on gotcha in our culture. Um, mm. But, like... I don't think they're going to. And so then, the, but if we ever caught up to Japan and we were on the forefront with Japan, like, I think that changes a lot because now they could, now we actually, they're, while they're developing new things, instead of just translating things, they actually have, we have a chance to be like, Hey, here's our priority list of things that we want to change. Um, but that's what, that's one of the main reasons I want to catch up with Japan, but who knows, who knows mm. if we will, how long it'll take yada, yada. Yeah. But, uh, so, you know, that's um, somebody in the in the chat, in my chat, not yours, the good chat here, um, mentioned uh, he's going to save his gems for the DQ5 event, uh, Jacob, by the way. Um, this game is starting to have, it, it's starting to get must-have units. Would you would you agree with that? Now, I know you don't look ahead as much, but you've maybe heard of Seraphie? I know it's the human slime. 
the human side. Well, she has um, she has an ability that will heal units automatically when they take a hit within range of her. I guess I don't know exactly how it hits. I, I'm guessing it's the same kind of meta- mechanic as a uh, metal dragon, but you know, for taking hits instead of giving them. But um, I've heard a lot. Not only does that sound insane, but there are people that uh. Now, we know not to take everything as gospel for JP predictions, but a lot of people are claiming that she is mandatory for certain hard content. Um, I don't know. And then Sorrow and a Stark, like, it doesn't, like, compared to that, Sorrow doesn't even sound like, Sorrow's game-breaking, but you can live without him, it feels like. But now it's like, I don't know, there's a unit after the anniversary that people are saying that we need. I don't really love that in a game. Um, I'm always... Or the fact that... I'm always in JP recently, skeptical. they made a caster that has a spell where the only thing special about the spell is a, that it goes through bounce. Uh, so it's just a it's just a unit that fixes the... It has right on it that it fixes the spell reflect problem. Not sure that I'm crazy about that. I'm definitely skipping a Stark. There's no doubt about that. Um, Seraphy, I, I'm yeah. always skeptical when someone says a unit's mandatory. Like I, it's one of my least favorite things because in a game, in a tactics game, nothing's mandatory. But this game has had a lot of like, you know, like Hell Gladiator has been quote unquote mandatory for content. Um, it's like mandatory unless you have overly broken units or something like that, right? Um, mm. and so I'm just kind of, I'm skeptical if anyone said like, especially from a healer. Like, I don't know what... I need to see her whole kit to see why she'd be mandatory, but we have healers. We have cover tanks, right? Like, yeah. I can see a cover tank being more mandatory than a healer. Um, so well, it's it, free healing. Yeah, but even then, like, uh, King... A- Emperor Slime has enough healing to heal for, like, 10 turns or something. Like, ridiculously long amounts of time. Um, maybe not literally 10 turns. That's a long time. But, you know, I, I just... Yeah. I have a hard you, time... You start getting like, RNG with Emperor Slime. Yeah. I have a hard time believing that unit's mandatory. Um, well, I'll, I, I'll judge it more when it comes up. I might get Seraph. Yeah. I might not. I might get a Stark. I might not. I'm just going to do, you know, if I get lucky, I'm not going to spend money on the game until it probably, like, I'll spend, like, I'm going to buy the six-month banner. I'm going to do a full stamp card on the six-month, right? Because it's a good way yeah. to, it's a, val- it's, quote, you know, it's, you're spending $200 in a stupid game, but it's still, like, quote-unquote value compared to normal, and I want to support the game that has given me a YouTube career as well. Um, not career, yeah. but YouTube, you know, revenue opportunity Um, but like beyond that i don't want to spend money in the game on anything the game is not making it remotely tempting to spend money and so i'm not going to pull on these banner units like i'm just i'm not going to i have no interest in them i'll pull on super special banners i might do an occasional paid banner you know like uh you know we have a 25 percent to get the banner unit mostly just because it could be fun for a community you know people like watching to see if you get it um But like pulling it, like pulling a new banner unit. Like if I get a Stark and then I get Seraph, I'm there's a part of me that goes like, "Fuck!" Now I need to get it to level one ten. Great, you know. Like that's mm. I don't like having that feeling of like it's a chore to to use the unit that I just got. Um, yeah, it's a it's a chore. It takes away from another unit. I mean, that's just another orb problem. But um, yeah, and it's plus I think that this game is going to start having. It's new to us on Global. We just got the DQ35 banners for the first time with multiple things, but uh, JP last month got a celebration event with um, a banner with a bunch of uh, featured units on it again, too. Uh, so I think that every three months or so, we can start expecting what I'll just call a multi-banner, um, which seemed to have a way better value. So... I don't know, like something like Seraphy seems to be game breaking. Maybe that'll be the last unit that I like go for individually. Maybe not. Uh, depends on my situation at the time. But yeah, for the most part, I think maybe I'm just done going for individual banners outside of, um, uh, you know, the paid ones only. Um, so, I mean, maybe I'll be weak and stupid, but I think that the average player, the free to play, especially, or the very casual light spenders, I don't think, I think we're at the point where you should no longer spend on one ma- uh, banner uh uh banner yeah one unit banners yeah i i just i don't i like uh, when i pull on a banner i there's not a single non banner unit that i can be remotely excited about almost right like i mean yeah i can get an s like i'm mm. looking for some s units and stuff but those are those are rare but like i don't need mummy boys and stuff i'm getting mostly silver medini medals for my money which is not worth mm. it 
So I'm just like, it, it's weird that people that have played the game as long as us and have spent as much as we have are feel like the least incentivized to spend money. It, it's just, yeah. again, it, it all boils down to the bad monetization, I think. Um, and I like I want to be a player that wants to spend more money and wants to spend fifty bucks a month or a hundred bucks a month on this game. But I'm like, I don't. I'm not gonna. What am I getting? I'm not getting anything I want. Yeah. Um, by the way, that reminds me, you know, talking about silver tickets and stuff. Um, I, 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 I think I'll say it this way. I will be alarmed if there isn't a change to the general pool and, or like just a significant change in the way that the average, um, the way scouting works in general, but yeah, if they don't change the general pool, uh, lower rank and S ranks by, uh, the first year in Japan, I, I, I think that's reason for alarm. Do you have anything to... Until I have a fully awakened White King, I don't want them to add any more units. I only have a one awakened White King, and I am fucking. I'm sick of it. I want a fully awakened White King. I just got the three. I I have. You know what? Two S units. I have fully awakened. The two S units I got fully awakened. Oh, what do you have? I don't have any. I have Nightclubber and King She Slime. (laughs) I think my King She Slime is at least three. Maybe it's four. I got, and I even got a my very first only metal S unit with a King She Slime. So I pulled seven King She Slimes. Mm. Like I have oh, a three okay. awakened great, you know, three awakened great dragon, three awakened metal dragon, three awakened. Uh, so I have like a lot of things that are fully like, or have like three awakening, but fucking one awakening on White King. It's my most unawakened S unit besides Hybrid, but who cares? And you've had a little bit better luck than I have, I think. Oh, you know, that's another thing. Malcolm fixed this game. Why does it take me like a full minute to get in? I'm tired of waiting every time I want to look at my unit list. I like, This is what's so mind blowing to me exactly. is I'm just asking for ways to spend money. Yes. I'm, I'm not asking for free <laughs> shit. I'm not saying we need more stamina. We need more free orbs. I mean, I do think we need more orbs. I think we actually irises might be a bigger issue. But like more than anything, yeah. like I'm not, I, I'm, I'm asking for ways to give the game money, and they're just not there. The only mm. way to spend money is to like, th- there should be like a few more steps of separation between the person that wants to spend a little bit and the person that it's like, because once you're at the point in the gotcha where you're just buying gems to pull on banners without any discount, you know, just full price ten pulls, you're a whale at that point, you know. Where's the people that don't want to yeah. go that far? Like, you get one paid banner. Okay, that's a guaranteed S unit. Okay, that's pretty good. But, like, then you could buy orbs. But it's just, like, where's the where's the stuff that I could buy on banners? You know, where's, like, I don't know. There's, like, just bring up my hero, all right? There's a 100 million ways to spend 10 to $50 in that game. There's tons mm-hmm. of ways to spend 10 to $50 in that game to make you walk up that ladder, you know, to spend from zero to whatever. Uh, And it's like Dragon Quest doesn't have any of that. It's so bad at the monetization. It's like, it just, I would love, just give me a way to spend money. I I know exactly what you're talking about. Cause maybe free to play guys don't understand. Like just casual spenders like you and I, like when we're really into a game, we really are like, what can I buy to pay to win myself through this game right now? Like I actually want to spend I want to be stupid and spend money today. And this game doesn't give you this other than doing, yeah, overpriced gem sales for just a relatively crappy banner system right now. No matter how much I want to spend money in this game, I am not going to spend, I'm not going to buy 3,000 gems to do a 10 pull because there's no, the, the chances yeah. of me getting anything I want is dog shit. And so the only yeah. way I would do 10 pulls if I'm going to do a full ticket. And I'm not going to spend, I'm not like, yeah, I'm in the mood to be dumb. I'm not in the mood to be like absolutely reckless with my income. You know, I'm not going to spend $230 or whatever it is to get one guaranteed fucking King She Slime, you know, like, yeah, it's, you get like a 50, 50 chance for the banner unit. I think, um, through a full stamp card, I think it about what it works out at. Yeah, we just need, like, it was one of my early things, like, even when I started the game is like, cause they had the $1 bundle. They've had like a couple other bundles and like the, uh set items and that but... wasn't even that's not even per account either like that was like i think that was like the first month only that dollar bundle yeah so now that... if you just start today you don't even have that temptation to start spending like there should be like oh so stupid like yeah there is this monthly orb thing right but there should be like 
there should be a weekly uh, package in here. There should be a month. There should be like three monthly packages. Like there, why it doesn't make any sense why there isn't and like they're a, always. They're always just barely like, eh, I guess maybe I want that. I I regret buying the ones with ability scrolls in it now. Like what if sure. what if this monthly thing here, like not this one, but there was like another mm -hmm. monthly one that was like, oh, here is two thousand gems. And you get a 10 pull for, I don't know, maybe it's generic banner. Maybe it's one of the featured banners, but it's like, it's instead of 3000 gems once a month, you get a 2000 gem 10 pull, but it has to be paid gems. I'm like, yeah, a lot of people, like, even if I don't buy it every month, like what are they losing by having shit like that? How many, like the, one yeah. of the main issues people have from what I've seen is like people cannot pull for a month and be fine. When you do like one pull and then you're like, you didn't get what you want. Then you're more tempted to keep pulling, you know? Um, yeah, and I don't. It just it's crazy. I don't know. I, yeah, they're I, they're valuing things too high, and they they think that valuing it higher will get them more money, but really, it just it, it's getting you one hundred percent of nothing rather than ninety percent of you know what you're thinking. You know, I don't. Know. That's a terrible way to describe. Yeah, they're 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 getting less by trying for more. Yeah, and hopefully, I mean, hopefully they'll fix the monetization. I still think it's the. I think monetization is like might be one of the core issues of the game um i think mm. not having enough game modes and monetization are the two deepest issues in the game total um mm. like like they i think they ref I, I think like yeah they're an issue but more importantly i think it's like a seed of an issue that can grow it kind of grows and affects everything in the game in a negative way right when people aren't tempted to spend money Suddenly, mm. people don't have as powerful units, and when people don't have as powerful units, content's harder to clear, and people clear less content. And but you know, it's like it's like a cascading effect. Um, because like if our version has people that stops clearing content, like if people, if only ten percent of players can actually clear the stuff, people are gonna be like, oh, I'm just done. All right, I can't even get the rewards because I can't do this thing. They've been pretty mm. good with it so far, but you know, as the gotchas get older, content's gonna get harder because they want people to spend money, you know, it's just kind of part of the whole cycle. Um, and if people aren't spending money because they don't like the value, you know, then suddenly we're not clearing content and the game can slowly start dying over time. It, this isn't even like, obviously better monetization equals more money, but beyond, I think it has much, much more profound effects than that alone. Um, so I think monetization and whatever the fuck the other thing I said was, I don't, I don't even remember. I'm so on monetization yeah. right now. I just realized like, it just, Sorry, half the things we've talked about today just feel like beating a dead horse. Like, yeah. <sighs> well, there's not there's not news in the game right now. You know, we don't have we know yeah. that Summerfest is coming up. We don't know fuck all about what's going to be in it. Um, I know we could go look at the Summerfest in Japan, and we could literally maybe we should just start doing that. Just no. like hey, no, you can't. That, that's that's what I'm saying. Like when I I, I don't want to say that I doubt Mad. I'm uh, what I when I say I don't know where he got his sources from. I mean, Japan hasn't gone through summer yet. So we're not getting their summer event this year. Well, actually, I mean, well, no, I mean, the game started in July there. Maybe they did have something called Summerfest, but like that would have been for month two for them. The the game started July 16th there. Um, So I have no idea what event they're going to take things from for our Summerfest. Yeah, that, that's what I keep saying. Like, I, I have no idea what to expect. So uh, even so this is cool because like you like looking ahead. Um, yeah, summer event was the second event in Japan. Okay, so we're just getting something way later. So is it going to be like? Oh, see, that's actually yeah, that's more disappointing. So, so I don't know. We could take even someone that's looking forward. Like, but here's the thing: if it's the second in Japan, but it's like our sixth, is there's no way it's going to be copied. Maybe they'll add another level of hard stages or something to it. But even that adds. Uh, more, is there going to be like other rewards or like? Like what's gonna be there? Because power creep. Sorry, not to be an asshole, but let's let's not let's not let's not have faith in Square. Honestly, I, I, I I'm saying that the most negative way possible, but like I don't expect them to change it. If they're just copying the the second event from there, I'm not expecting much. Um, because and, and another thing that's bad about that is that um, you know we we've just started hitting pow serious power creep with um. You know, heroes actually aren't a big deal, but we got a Stark or uh, sorry, Sorrow. Um, yeah, Sorrow's a, a Stark is coming right soon. Seraphie is probably about two months away because uh, that came 
very early February, late January for Japan. So that's like two months from where we are now. Um, I mean, I think sorrow is the serious s- power creep. Yeah, I think sorrow is the second like unit that's like, oh, this is a ridiculously powerful unit. I think Zoma was number one. And oh yeah, sorrow. Oh, yeah. Sorrow is number two. As like, all right, these units are just like better than all the other units in the game. Um, mm-hmm. outside of that, like even um, like the heroes are powerful, but they're not like they're fine. You know, they're they're not like yeah. you can't like they they don't have like high HP, right? They're not like all rounders, incredible. Um, but in arena, they're just maybe not bad, but like they're not arena units. So yeah, TV. And then PVE, it's like they're not doing anything especially amazing there so far. So, um, yeah, but yeah, so don't mistake me saying that the Summerfest units will be useless. But with the new power creep, like Juliante, I don't know really what she does. I've heard she's good, but I watched Mads video. Is she going to be good enough to give a shit about five minutes before the anniversary hits? Probably not. (laughs) It doesn't matter. It doesn't matter to me if she's literally the best unit in the entire game for the next six months. I'm not going to spend money on her because I don't want to spend money on the game right now. I'm saving for the six month anniversary regardless because I know like meta wise gotchas use those kinds of things to as a big basis to judge their success on. Right. Like because that's where hype's at an all time high, you know, for like, oh, here's this really valuable banner. And so I would rather spend my money there versus even on a better unit i don't even know how to find the dragon quest like i don't know the where to find the second event for dragon japan i don't even know how to look up japan stuff i'm on not japan twitter yeah i could forward it to you if you want but you're not interested right i I mean i'd rather you just look it up and you tell me all right i'm on their wiki i don't know how to read it do you have it do you garbage translate it uh yeah that's and you get english and then it's like Oh man, you wish it was as good as standard. Google what translate are you on the game with? Late page. I don't know. I just Googled Japan things. So we're going to Google Translate URL. No, no, no. Google Translate URL. Translate web iTools. Do this. Well, I think I'm going to. Sh- should we end the official podcast here? We're at 91 minutes. Um. Well, let's let's wrap it up. Let's see if there's a. Uh, okay. What, what are what's our final topic? Let's do questions. Okay. Sorry for bitching about um, the game. I, I've again. I maybe next week we just talk about the shit we like about the game. Um, I could talk yeah, a lot we, about. I could talk a lot about how much I love the actual gameplay of the game, how much I love the free to pay aspects of the game, how much I think it's really fun and cool to collect units and get them fully awakened, and um, I love battle roads. There's a lot I love about the game, so which is why I focus on the. You know, I want to focus on the things I want to fix because it, it feels kind of like yeah, yeah, the, you. As an individual, it feels less interesting to talk about the things you like because you know what you like and you don't care if it changes. But as a viewer, you got I, I got to remember to be more balanced, um, just in yeah. general. Well, I, I feel bad. I came into today's podcast with well, I mean I mean I started with like uh, what the hell do you want to talk about, Platt? Like, I, I guess that's a topic is that there was nothing to talk about this week, but that that's just more whining. Yeah, exactly. So, I I do I think i have even a stronger case than chase when it comes to saying i love the game uh because i actually like mm. doing battle road eights battle roads has always mm. has been my favorite part of the game since the game started mm. um yeah always and forever it's it's like it's uh well for lots of reasons but like the reason i don't like ex fights as much as i like battle road i would rather have really really hard battle road fights than really really hard ex fights personally um and maybe mm. it changes a because a really hard ex fights are it's like a puzzle, right? But it's a puzzle where you could change the pieces and then you could change the size of the pieces you bring. It's like, there, yeah. that's a lot of variables. When you have um, a battle road that's really hard, the game gives you all the pieces. Here's all the pieces you need. And yeah, like I said, you could change the size of the pieces in terms, you know, that metaphor means like you could change how strong they are. Um, but yeah. you at least have the right pieces for the puzzle in the mm-hmm. first place. Yeah, it's 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 nice when you've only got like, you pick five of eight units. Like, you can only mess up so much. All right. Uh, any questions today? Let's take a look. What happened to Laliette? Laliette is dead. Uh, did anyone ever explain why he left? Because he was murdered? No, I'm joking. Laliette just doesn't want to do the podcast. His, uh, basically, his family he was like, hey. kids are more important than Dragon Quest, which he, is. He made the personal decision to spend more time uh, with his IRL family instead of his digital family, which is totally fine. Um. 
super lucky i managed to dodge running into sorrow in the arena yeah i always i avoid sorrow like the plague because mine's only 90. i've got a slime girl on yeah. my japan alt won't be as lucky as na you might be um yeah uh, so jacob point sorry oh was it no i was just gonna say if you have questions feel free to get them in we'll answer questions i think for like 10 minutes yeah jacob pointed out now this is old news for a lot of us but maybe you've forgotten already maybe other people don't know uh jacob pointed out in my stream that uh we will also get nimzo nobody cares and the three brides here's the thing about the three brides is i mean well you know i'm starting to speculate more that maybe we'll get screwed but japan when they got the three bride banners from uh dragon quest 5 they got uh an item called the water ring i believe at let them choose one of the brides for free, like one of the gotcha banner units. Yeah, you for can free. Pick one. I think I, I'll I'll be shocked if we don't get that. We'll definitely get it. I, I would be shocked too, but I'm also waiting for it. <laughs> but that's just that's just doom and gloom here. Yeah, actually, yeah, Lalia did start an anime podcast with a friend. Basically, he had to choose which podcast to do, and he was more interested in the anime one. But he started with fruit basket. I didn't I didn't watch it. I just know that he did something about Fruits Basket. Like Look at he's a bit of a weeb, all right. I'll admit it. Doesn't he's mean a I don't cage fighter, bro. What WTF? Alright, I'm trying to look up right now summer event. I, I, I can't I can't figure this shit out on this fucking translated page. I don't even know why I'm trying to find out where the events are and I can't find them. You pre what I do is I go through their article history. That's what um, I tried, but it's like the second event, I have to go back like a year and I can't find it. All right. Um, mm. How many Orochi stages did I clear? So far, I've cleared seven. I have not yet attempted eight. I might attempt eight on tomorrow's stream. We will find out. But as of today, I'm okay with just having a uh, seven. All right. Uh, let me see. Let me uh, click click the link I just sent you in Discord. I'm, I'm, it better not be fucking porn. Is this your grinder? Oh my god. It's it's not grinder. It's just it's just my dick pic. Just. It's not translated. Oh, it's what the fuck am I supposed to do about this? Google translates it automatically. Just, no, it, just no, it doesn't. Like the Google... I, I don't have that button. I have to go to a different web page to have Google translate it. Okay, Boomer. I don't know how you're... Fu I don't have a web add-on. I don't know what the fuck that is. All right. So I'm going to scroll down. I don't know. It just, works on, it just works on my laptop, man. It just translates automatically. Uh, let me see... In Dragon Quest, you could choose a wife. Uh, you will definitely be able to get one of them for free. Uh, I, I would think so, yeah. I'd be shocked. Like, Christian on, says hello. Honestly shocked. Hello. Yeah. Um, oh, yeah, Juliante boss battle. Juliante. So Juliante came before Queen Slime. Hmm. Uh, yes. Yeah, so the Slime event must have been like their third event or something. Hard to say. Oh, it's funny. Here's but, a guide. There's a guide that came out August 13th. How to deal 500 damage. That must be old, um, for sure. Yeah. Okay, well, some so of those articles are are tough because um, they update them. So, like, if you're looking at the thing for like, oh, how do you take on Cave of Trials? It's like, oh, well, just bring um, you know, just bring all these like units that came out last month in Japan. Like, oh, thank you. All right, let's take a look. So there's going to be a Juliante EX fight um, on, I, I don't know the day, but it looks like there's event missions, a boss battle, a login bonus, an event quest, so a full-on event worth of stuff. And then at the week later, they're going to add boss battle quests and an EX Juliante fight. Um, there will also be a, a two new A units, from what I see, and orbs, at least one orb. And two oh geez, games. that's another thing. I mean, they're gonna like we're now in the meta where we need more than one orb per event. Uh, are they gonna update that in the summer fast? I don't know. Okay, so it looks like we're going to get at least two new A monsters and two new A equipment and a new banner and some orbs. So huge. It's gonna it's gonna be fantastic. It's gonna be tons of stuff to do, tons of stuff to grind. I'm very excited to get the uh, Yaki corn and the festival fan. And there's going to be a food stall ghost and a, a, um, what's the other a unit? A, an A, so a white King, but an a white King. I don't know what he oh, does. Okay. He, he looks like a, he looks like one of those casters. 
Oh, okay, cool. All right, well, we are not getting any questions in chat, so I think uh, I think I'm going to wrap up the recording. All right, is demonic devastation potency better than agility on sorrow nails? That's what I'm going to go for. I don't want Mac. I have a sorrow, and I have a sorrow. And I'm going to hopefully get him to awakening three before the event ends if I get lucky with my tickets. Um, so I personally don't think I need agility on it. We just got golden claws, which adds like 80 agility to a unit. If you fully roll that for agility. And I don't feel like I need the redundancy of having multiple of those, but we will see yeah. question for Platt. I'm free to play. I got a level 94 awakened night clubber. Should I use my next orb on him? Clubber aside, my most awakened S unit is white King to awaken. Do not use your orb on night clubber. Night Clubber might be the single worst S unit in the entire game. And I think, I think that the chances that you'll need to use him is very, very low. Again, we could talk about Chase has mentioned that his defense is so high. There might be content he's good in, but he currently That's whale only stuff. Yeah, he currently is whale only stuff. White King should be if you're going to max out a unit. White King is way better. White King to awaken Ooh. is insanely powerful. It will help you with all your content. Because even he's got Zamel, he's got Swoot, cause Swoosh, um, very powerful. Skip the Night Clubber. It's unfortunate that you have five of them, four Awaken and you know the original. Um, but White King is very good. Use that. Although I'll tell you, I bet Night Night Clubber. I don't know. I'm not. Don't orb him. Do not orb him. Ah uh, man, now the Talent Bloom system is like, what? What are they gonna do with him? Because. Here's the, I mean, this is the first stage of uh, Talent Bloom. The way these things usually go is, I mean, they keep up with the meta. So if you're disappointed that one of your favorites didn't get uh, bloomed yet, first of all, it means they didn't suck, generally. Second, when they do get their bloom talents, uh, they're going to be even more awesome. So, <laughs> Yeah, actually, I want to look at the next. Um, what's a a good, s maybe Leary Loud. Oh, my God. I want to see Leary Loud's bloom. That would be oh my crazy. God. Yeah. I think Bubble It'll Slime needs a, a bloom. I think he might, Bubble Slime is one of the worst E units, man. That guy, Bubble oh, yeah. Slime's poison attack isn't even a signature. Uh, here, here's Bubble Slime's uh, uh, bloom. He becomes an A rank and gets King Bubble Slime's leader skill. Exactly. There Thank you, go. you. Give Give E ranks leadership abilities just for a meme. I don't even care. Uh, Talent Bloom <laughs> is not coming anytime soon. Uh, are 75 A type books enough for now, each type, or should I farm more? farm until you cannot farm anymore there's literally nothing else to spend your stamina on right now other than awakenings for units that you're not going to want to use anyway probably um just get the books just get um, the books uh, you know what what units even if you can't afford to do them right now what are your favorite units that you haven't even gotten close to maxing their abilities get that also um typeless tomes seem to be the most con there are there are a lot of uh, typeless A rank skills. Maybe they're not the best ones, but there are a lot of them. And then B and Cs, there are a buttload of um, typeless B and C skills. So if you want to go manual, if you're not just skip ticketing like I am right now, um, I think that the um, what the eight and twelve point uh, stam uh, normal stages, if you feel like uh, just grinding manually. Um, or at least just not using skip tickets. Uh, yeah, I would suggest the typeless beans. Uh, what ultra and super or whatever. I don't know the twelve and eight point stage, uh, stamp stages. Do those because they're you never have too many um, B and C type uh, typeless uh, tomes, right? Absolutely correct. The uh, especially C yeah. tomes like the the <laughs> typeless C are the only good C tomes because like. Sweet breath, like blunt, buff, all these insanely powerful potent effects are C tomes. So if you have like an extra five hundred of them, it doesn't matter. I had a buttload of those for a while, and then we needed to start using yeah, blunt and um uh, the other abilities that you just mentioned, like it's like, oh sweet breath, snooze. It's like, oh yeah, I need a shitload of um typeless C tomes. So yeah. Maybe um Mummy Boy is my favorite unit that isn't maxed out he only mm. has a uh, zam he only has the uh dark spike plus five um but mine is obviously fully awakened because he got he's a gotcha unit he is fully maxed out but the dark spike plus five he he's he's like one of the units that just punches up like hardcore this is like an a unit almost like he hits hard mm. he moves fast the only bad thing about him is agility is low so he misses in really hard content um also 
are they all C units that I'm actually talking about? Yeah, I mean C units. Like you gotta look at C units, man. They're C units aren't scrubs for non arena content. Like the fact that Clossifer is the number one Frizzle unit in the game outside of no nope, number one Frizzle isn't Frizzle like the actual ability Frizzle. He's yeah. the number one in the game. Like yeah, um, Dragon Lord has better Frizz damage, but as far as Frizzle, no one does it better than Clossifer in the entire game because of the potency bonus. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and that's uh, I mean if you're looking at like maybe a ten round fight or something like that, Dragon Lord's still probably better. Because he can just use Frizzle, but he doesn't have, you know, if, if you're making the argument that uh, he'll, you know, still get some rounds of uh, Kufrizzle, like, well, if you're going for, like, ten rounds, maybe you just need Frizzle every single turn, and it's going to be better from Klauser than even Dragonlord. It's crazy. Yep. Oh, we're getting Demon, wait, Demon Beast Fragments. Are Demon Beasts just beasts in Japan? Um, a translation error, but uh, yeah, it's probably just Demon. No, it's probably or just beast. beast. It's probably just beast. I think that's gonna be yeah. nice. Getting thirty more beast fragments. Um, someone wants to ask, do I ever farm the for battle road units? Yes, I battle road eight, um, is very difficult, and I feel like a lot of time getting units up. I never farm to awaken five on units for like mm. normal ones because that's just so much stamina, and I'm doing books right now. But I will frequently farm to awaken four because that does give them the double resistances, and a lot of times, obviously, in the battle roads. The enemies are fighting specifically with the element that your units resist. So a 75% uh, resistance is very, very good. Yeah. Oh, by the way, you know, I don't, if you want to stay on live, we should, but why don't we just, um, why don't we just put some closers for the recording? You want to put some closers? You want to keep answering. Yeah. I don't know. Just say, say goodbye or whatever. Like, okay. Okay. I'm going to answer one last question and then we'll do an official sign out. Uh, okay. They we ask, can still keep answering questions, but yeah. Yeah, yeah. They, well, I just want to answer this one because it's right here and I already read it and it's in my head. Have you? How do you have time to uh, level experience Hoodlum? Uh, he has no battle road. Because I have a team of units that I'm leveling constantly, and I this is a I I uh, purposely mm. put this unit in there because he was one of the two new units in the story, and I wanted to see if he would be good because he seemed like he would be good. So I just put him in all my daily EXP grinds. Um, now that he is for awakening C6 level 85, I have determined that he's not that good. Um, unfortunately, he's only got 267 attack. However, because he has a Aeolian slash and he does resist um, bang zap, there is definitely going to be a situation where he's good. Um, I don't know where he's going to be good yet. But Aeolian Slash with a, like, if, if this guy's going to be my carry, you could put on a flail on him and he could still do some good damage, but he kind of sucks. Um, mm. But anyway, so that's going to be the sign out. We're going to end the podcast there, right, guys? Thank you so much yeah, for we watching. We can still stay live just for the recording, that's all. So We're going to end the podcast here, guys. Thank you so much for watching. Uh, we appreciate it. Chase and Platt. I mean, I'm Platt. I'm Chase. And our what's the name of our podcast? The DQT podcast with Platt and Chase. The Dragon Quest Tact podcast. The DQT podcast with Platt and Chase is signing out. Thank you so much for watching, uh, guys. Patreon in the description. Go do it. Uh, yes, thanks for tuning in, guys. Have a good week. We'll see you next week. Peace. All right, cool. So now we can just keep talking to these assholes. All right. So podcast is over, but now we can just hang out. Yeah, cool. All right. Uh all right. Oh, good. Uh, now, now all the pressure's gone. Now that it's not recording, fuck Dragon Quest. Fuck yeah, this, this game, game. Sucks. This is dead in a week. Docs dead Malcolm. Week. No, I'm joking. I don't even want to say that as a joke. All right, I'm taking. I'm taking a uh, bad habit break. So you I'm smoke? still right here. Do you, are, you, are you in a cheeseburger or are you smoking? Just smoking. Good. That's fine with me. Cigarettes, by the way, it's not pot. I just think it's vulgar to smoke on stream. Uh, why do I care if you smoke pot? Is it not legal in your state? Uh, you know what? New York legalized it kind of like five minutes ago. Um, although I think it's, well, it's been decriminalized. And then um, I think I think you can start growing. I, I don't know. You can like grow a couple of plants. If you want. There's things that happened like last week. Things that are changing next year. Like, next year you can buy legally. Um, there, there's more weed so. stores than gas stations where I'm at, so...
I forget what, what are you you're in the northwest, right? Yeah, I'm in the Evergreen State. Oh, okay. It, you know, I've only been through their uh, truck driving. Am I am I incorrect for saying that Oregon and Washington are like the same place in my mind? I don't there's no distinction there for me. Um they're pretty similar. Um although It's like driving through a giant state park. I, I kind of liked it. Portland is kind of like discount Seattle, but okay, Portland is like if Seattle wasn't a shithole, but I also <laughs> like Seattle more than I like Portland. It's kind of weird. Like Portland is such a crazy place, but it is very big, but like Portland's very hipstery too. Like there's a lot of like oh, you like artisan beers and that kind of stuff, you know. But in Seattle's not as much that, but Seattle also mm. is very dirty. I was gonna say you, you. I, I think I can see Seattle on you. You like you're not, you're not as annoying as a Californian, but like Seattle is like a, like a reasonable uh, mix of a, uh, West Coast. Yeah, I would say Oregon is more uh, is more similar to California in terms of the culture. It would seem like than California would be a, a fucking awesome state if it weren't for all the Californians in it. Yeah, Washington. I agree. Uh, Washington is actually kind of a weird state because it's like we we're very politically blue, but it's actually in terms of the actual population, it's way more even. Um, it just because Seattle, right, is very very blue. Um, but it, like the culture is just different because like all of Eastern Washington, like all Spokane and stuff, they're much much more uh, red. And, um, oh yeah. There's there's a New very, York is very, the same thing. Yeah. There's a very very um. There's so yeah. The the overall like uh political landscape is actually much more fifty fifty here than I think um it looks like based off the uh voting results. Well, that it's like weird. Like Colorado is a blue state now, but it's only Denver. I mean, everybody in Denver except for all the transplants and uh sorry in Colorado except for the transplants in Denver, the red state that's taken over by Denver. <laughs> Yeah, I don't know. I, I don't I don't know anything about voting or how it works. All I know is that I voted for Kanye. So that was where my mm. vote went. Yeah. Well that's uh yeah, Kanye. And then uh God, I, I think uh Caitlyn Jenner is running for Republican governor of California. That could be interesting. Yeah, that's cool. I mean I, I Yeah, I, whoever whoever they want to lead, I'm cool with. I don't care. Caitlin's interesting, that's for sure. Um, all I know is that people aren't asking about Dragon Quest Tact. Yeah, that's uh, you guys are terrible. Like, ask fucking stupid questions. Like, ask Flat what color is underwear or something. Like, we tell you guys it's time for questions, and you just sit there with your fucking hands on your dicks. Um, and yeah, come on, guys. Sorry, we're just having fun now, right? Like, it's not recorded, so these guys we don't have to care about hurting their feelings here, do we? No, I'm really impressed by this thunder shower ability on this Bodkin Boyer. This is a great ability. It sounds it sounds like it works out better than it reads because reading Bodkin Boyer is like, uh, he doesn't look that impressive. But people are telling me that he's actually amazing. Well, he he has a tr he has mints, but he has a ranged zap mints that Hellion has, and I think actually let's say oh, that is fifty five percent. Let's take a look. So the fact that it's ranged oh, yeah. means he could be in a formation. Like a, a calling it a ranged elemental mince makes it sound a lot better, and, and I mean it's obvious, but it's the kind of thing. It's the kind of thing that sometimes you have to think about more. I think it has the exact potency as mince as well. I think it's literally mince, but with zap and at range three. Mm. I think his attack is decent too, isn't it? It's hard to I can't remember. But, I mean, he's got to have a high attack for that to matter. Uh, you're saying that Christian says that one of my videos, I said lethal armor, a sorry, lethal armor is not a great a unit. Um, if I said that I'm talking on my ass, you could see I've literally never used mine. Mine's level 69. I've not used yeah. it one time ever. It has zero awakenings. I didn't pull on this banner yeah. or I did. That, I, that's I just problem. got one. Yeah, that's, that's the problem with lethal, lethal armor. I have one copy as well. And he does look very, very good. The problem is that there was no reason to spend gems on the uh, the killing machine banner. What what's his max like, attack? You know, I'm gonna go look. I'm gonna. Go, I've never bought his ticket. Let's go to the meeting point, right? That's in um special. I know how to do this. Meeting member A. Let's find lethal armor. I'm gonna tell you right now if he's good or not. Give me give me a second here. 
uh, Night Aberrant. I don't even know that unit. I don't even know all the... The A units are harder to keep track of than the other units because I, if I don't pull on a banner, I never hear about him again. Oh, is he not here? Let's take a look. I, a, he's, oh, here he is. There he is. There he is. And I, don't, I just want to look at him. All right, Max. He has got 415 attack. That's pretty good. Um, 736 okay. defense. 313 agility. Three movement. No, he's great. But the issue is he doesn't have any good abilities. Um, he's got both. He's got a 180% crack, a 180% sizz. Those are both a little bit lackluster. Typically, you would like a cooler, more powerful ability. That um, like Hellions is better than 180%, right? His Hellfire Slash, or is it literally that? Is it literally that one? Oh, no. Hell Here, here's the thing. It's a subtle thing that's unique. I'm just going to go off about Hellion for a minute. Hellion is, is it's Hellfire. It is just a standard B-Rank scroll. The thing is where, uh, like, uh, Boreal Serpent, for example, his rolling attack is uh, good because it gets a uh, 3 5% potency boost, right? Yes. Yeah. Uh, and then 2% for reaching uh, max rank now, or max level now. Uh Hellion's abilities, he gets three times. One is a general frizz uh, boost, and then two of them are for his move. But each of those are 10%. He actually gets a 32% potency bonus to his Hellfire Slash. Okay, so That's this is Blizzard po potency. This is Blizzard Rush plus five plus five. Hellion gets plus 10 plus 10? Uh, yeah, he gets 10 for frizz, and then two 10% for uh, Hellfire Slash specifically. And then, of course, the 2% for reaching level 100. So, yeah, where uh, other units are getting, um, like, a 12% bonus or maybe even a 17% bonus to their big move, he's getting 32% potency boost. Yeah, Hellion's busted. Hell so, I, 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 so here's the thing. I actually, looking at Lethal Armor, he seems pretty good. He definitely yeah. seems like a good, a great A unit. Um, the issue is no one has him, right? Like, the people that I mean, have him... Like, how many people... I, everyone has Killing Machine, kind of, because I think it's always there first as a banner if you start the game, but it's just, like, he's very, very... Um, it's just uncommon to have a fully awakened lethal armor comparatively to a Hellion, and Hellion's in the general pool. Uh, like, okay, just doing real simple, like, uh, you know, with potency values, you multiply that by... Um, for B-Rank Scrolls, it's 270. So there's more to the damage calculation, of course, but, like, a 270 times 1.17 is 316 damage. 270 times 1.32 is 356. Okay, that's before... Uh, and there's tons more. There's way more to the damage calc than that, but um, the numbers are way bigger after everything else. But let's say... So, I mean, when you're talking about just the, the, the move potency, it's 356 rather than 315. It's 40% more potency on Hellion than any other, you know, hey, similar yeah. abilities. Love your stream. Hey, Royal Heights. Love your stream. Learned a lot. What is the best stage to level units? Uh, you don't want to spend stamina to level no. units. That's a unwise use of your stamina typically. However, if you're so new to the game where you actually cannot clear the story and you're trying to, um, or, you know, can't clear the story up to level 15 and you're trying to get strong enough so you could farm a rank books and stuff um, on th there's a, there's an objective, correct answer. Um, and the ob objective correct answer, let me look, is 18-1. 18-1. Is that it? Yeah, 18-1. Yeah. Outside um, of that, uh, the yeah. stage with Musifer, because you can also get Musifer. Yeah. Uh, this week, I would say just get the passive XP from the Tome event. That's yeah. It's not going to level you up the fastest, but it's going to be the most efficient because you need those tomes. Yeah, so spend, spend the stamina it. on tomes. You will level up there. Use skip tickets on the 20 stamina ones. I would recommend. Like, take your weak-ass units that can't clear it. Then use skip tickets to level them up, get your tomes. Um, mm. And then make sure you use even, the Metal Fest event as well. Even if you can't do the hell tier? I, first, does the 12-stam tome stage give just as much experience as the 20? I think it might. I don't know. But I know, I, I believe the 12 is worse than the 8 for getting b rank tomes. Like per stamina, it could be. I know sometimes it works out weird, but yeah, like uh, I, not all stages give the same uh, experience ratio. Some of them are better than others, but uh, yeah, just go ahead and farm tomes this week if you need experience. Yeah, um, all stage fours have the best exp to stamina ratio, though. You are correct. However, stage eighteen one has metal slimes that spawn in it. 
18 mm -hmm. 1 has free metal slimes that can always spawn. So this one always will have more experience for the most, you know, it'll have more experience on average. But outside of that, yeah, a really, really good stage. If you want to be dumb like me and you want to farm um, experience, like I did it when I started the game and I was new, 15-4 um, is very good in my opinion. Um, you get a Tuskateer, which is not very good, but you also get Drachima, and I have a fully awakened Drachima because... I like that unit, and this is good uh, experience. You guys consider Baramos good enough to spend irises on them? Irises or orbs? Those are different. Either way, it depends on your... It always... When it comes to S units, it's always going to come down to your awakening. Baramos is good. A zero awakened Baramos is not probably going to be worth it if you're going to have a... Mag, if, if you're going to have a max awakened White King eventually, and you're going to have a zero awakened Baramos forever, the resources would have been better spent on White King. Oh, let me see. Sorry, I'm just trying to upload the, uh, let me see, upload the, the episode to my Google Drive. So, sorry, I'm going to be boring for one second. Bro, you, mm -hmm. you've been boring ever since I met you. I'm cool with that. Yeah. Sorry, I'm a little less spirited today. I actually feel bad, so. <laughs> you feel mentally bad or physically bad? No, just like, uh, like the, I, I actually really enjoy doing the podcast. I, I guess this is only week two, but. Like, I've been super excited each time, and today I was like, uh, I have no idea what to go on about today. <laughs> yeah, it's e luckily it's easy to talk for a few hours. That's just what streaming is, you know? Um, yeah. But now, like, I'm excited for something to talk about. Next week, like, we'll talk about Summerfest for sure. So we already got it next week ready to go. Mm. We could talk about Summerfest yeah, the whole fucking time. Yeah, there should be time. plenty to talk about next week. Cool. Uh, let me see. Anything, uh... Oh man, my yeah, apartment, uh, my apartment uh, complex uh, is hiring. I might try to work for my apartment complex. You get a you get hmm. a discount uh, on your rent on top of you know your salary and benefits. Dude, jobs are for scrubs, man. Stay away from that shit. Uh, Platt, when are you starting your OnlyFans? As soon as uh, well, let's just say if you know, you know. Maybe my top tier Patreons hmm. already know about an OnlyFans. You'll have to give me twenty dollars a month uh, for six months to find out, though. Uh, no promises. Not, I'm not promising to give you anything for your money, so you can't sue me. OnlyFans is weird. You can't like search for people on there, right? Like you have to get like a link to them or something, or they have to be advertised on it. I don't know. Like, it's trying to see if any of my exes had an OnlyFans, and you can't just like search on there. You can't. You have to find someone that's to link you their OnlyFans. Pretty much, I think. I don't know. I don't really understand, dude. That's a thing, and like. All right, so let's just talk about pornography now. Like, uh, I talk it's about, weird, like, because now like the hottest there. chicks have an OnlyFans instead of giving me their like their tits for free on Pornhub. It's bullshit. Is that true? Are there OnlyFans? Like, here's the thing: if you're gonna watch porn, you just there's free porn videos on Pornhub. I don't, I don't get, dude. Yeah, I just don't get the whole pain to look at women naked thing when it's been free for so long. I mean, some of them are, t I mean, there are some super hot girls on OnlyFans, but it, it's not like, it's not like you're paying like a porn subscription fee. It's like, you can check out this one girl's OnlyFans for like 15 to 30 bucks a month. Yeah. That's a, that's so you're expensive. You're not that much to jerk off. Yeah. It, it, that's it, one girl. I, I've been jerking I'm, I'm off for like, free oh, since it's fucking sixth grade. I'm not going to start paying for it now. Yeah. Dude, I, I'm, I'm going to like page five on Pornhub. I'm not going to settle for one OnlyFans like. But yeah. dude, girls, dude, these hot chicks make a ton of money on OnlyFans, like a lot. It makes me wonder if guys are creepier than I realize, or if guys are more desperate than I realize, or if guys just have higher standards than I realize. I don't know. But I'm like, I'm not going to spend money on that. Are you crazy? I think it's like guys that think they have a chance if they're like one on one. I, they think they're having one on one conversations with a girl or something. That, like, OnlyFans is actually way 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 less tempting to me than anything yeah. else like i don't not even it, I, the thing is it feels like like porn is emotionless without connection you don't know these people they don't know you there's nothing there's no connection when it's only fans it's like you're trying to like get to know the person a little bit i don't know to me that like i'm in a committed loving relationship all right i don't want 
I don't want jerk off material like that. I don't get it. I just don't get it. I can't finish unless I hear stepbrother help. Oh, uh, help. I'm stuck in the washing machine again. <laughs> oh, I, I, I got my hand stuck in the couch looking for change. Can you help me? <laughs> oh, I'm so. There's always a. You know what? The more ridiculous the setup, it just like. I'm like, you know what? Thank you. I like ridiculous setups. Because, <laughs> because like, non, it's, non it's sarcasm, weird. I like ridiculous setups because it feels like. It plays into the whole like this isn't real thing, you know. Hmm. I know. I, I it's it's funny. We always made fun of storyline and porn, but yeah, now it's like, well, this chick's insanely hot, but she's just like banging this guy. I need a setup. Yeah, like good luck finding a porn without some sort of setup. Yeah, and I mean the 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 stepbrother, the like the step whatever thing is really like. I can't tell if I have a thing for that if, or if that's just like what 80% of porn is now. Royal High says, <laughs> guys, seriously, if you were a hot girl, you'd just do the same. Neither of us have, neither of us have, uh, I think, criticized females for making their money. And I think we both agree that we would be internet personalities for the pri right price. Oh, yeah. I'm already whoring myself out. The only issue is people aren't paying for it. All right. Hmm. Like I, oh, yeah. yeah. If I was like hot enough where I could just whip my dick out on camera and people would like, oh yeah, we'll pay thirty dollars a month to look at your dick. I'm like, yeah, f I would fucking do it. It was consent from my girlfriend. You kidding me? That's good. <laughs> that's good money. I'm not. I, is it morally wrong? No. What's the, who cares? I don't. No, I don't, it's what they, they now. Now they just generalize it all as sex work, which sounds. Way less flattering. Like, uh, dude, you're sh you're showing your boobs on cam. Like, let's not call that sex work. But it's supposed to be empowering now, which I think I don't okay. know about that. I I just do not like, give a. I don't shit. think it needs to be shamed. I don't give a shit about. I I just like there, for me, sex, in as is not have a moral connotation with it, unless you know you're betraying someone, right? Then it's betrayal, and like you know, cheating is not okay. Things like that. But like, if you're a person and what you do for fun is you casually have sex with random people that consensually, like, I don't think it makes you a worse person, like in any way. Like, I just, mm. I just, I just don't, I, I don't understand sex even having morals tied to it. If someone, a guy or girl, is quote unquote loose and they just have sex with lots of different partners, like, it just, <sighs> that's like, I, I, I think it's absolutely asinine that prostitution is illegal. Like it makes no sense, no sense to me at all. Like they make the excuse that like it's about keeping the women safe or something, but that's I think that's like old stuff. Yeah, like I I, I would I would prefer it to be legal, and there maybe to be a way, maybe a system set up so you know to because if we understand that it should be legal because it's two consenting adults choosing to do what they want, uh, we have no Keep say. It. We have, yeah, we have no say. Maybe we do have a system set up so to ensure the safety of people or, you know, maybe a a, a better um, reporting mechanism for sexual abuse or things like that, right? Let's keep it, uh, what, what, what's the term, safe, rare, and legal? Yeah. I mean, that sounds right. <laughs> right? That's the terminology right, but, for it? No, that's, that's the terminology for, uh, uh, for abortion. legalizing yeah, abortion. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> um, but I'm saying but, for pr prostitution, I just... I it's more insane to me. Like I don't I'm not saying I think people should prostitute and people should buy prostitutes. I think that's a a bad life decision and I think it's unlikely to lead you to happiness on either side of that. However, if a, an adult it consensually makes an agreement with another adult, it's not my business to tell them they can't do that legally. It sounds relatively common in Europe or at least a few European countries. Yeah, it's just like it's such a weird thing for me. Like, yeah. I just don't, I just don't understand. Like when you're saying something's illegal, you're saying that you as a third party can report it to a, a fourth party and have them stop it on your behalf, basically, you know, like that's, mm. that's crazy. You can see by making something illegal, you're saying the government can stop it forcibly with power and financial consequences. And I'm like, there are things that should definitely be illegal. Uh, consenting mm. adults doing what they want that would no harm to anyone else is not one of them. Yeah. But, uh, don't get me started on politics, man. But I, I don't know actually, anything about well, politics. I just well, want people. I just want. I want people to have fucking freedom. That's what I want. Yeah.
But uh, I think so, part of the reason I'm getting tired is uh, I think I'm hungry. It's like 6.30 here on my time. So uh, you're a big boy. You can keep going on your end, but I think I'm going to bow out. I'm probably going to end the stream here anyway. I'm not. Well, this has been too derailed. Yeah. What am I going to start talking about? All right, guys, let's just start. Let's go back to talk about normal shit. No, this needs like a I, mental I reset. I feel really... I feel really bad. I touched on this. You are really in the mood to talk, and I'm like, I'm tired today. I'm sorry. I I did not come ready to party today, so Bro, I'm, I'm going to bow out. I start streaming at around noon, so this is like just like my on time, so it is it is fine. Also, yeah. like you said, this is my pot. This is my stream. You're infiltrating yes. my shit. You can leave whenever you want. I'm here with chat. Exactly. All right. So, man, you have a good night, and I will see you next week. Maybe we'll actually do it on Tuesday for once. If you're no, you know, you know, if you're free, we'll see. So. We'll see. All right. The cats pissed Later, guys. all over uh, my floor. I had to clean up all the piss. It smelled too bad to focus. <laughs> all right. Goodbye to my chat. Goodbye to whatever you pricks went to Platt's uh, chat instead. Everyone have a good night. I'll Sounds see you later. Good. Peace out. All right, chat. It's just us. I'll hang out for a few more minutes, and then I'll probably will end it as well. Um, maybe eat some lunch. Ah, oh, my phone's almost dead anyway. It's fine. I'll just let it die. Um, man, that's probably just a good sign just to end it anyway. Um, if you guys have any more questions you want me to answer or you guys want to chat a little bit, just let me know. Um, I might be done with My Hero. I think I think I'm done with My Hero. I don't know. I'm, I'm kind of in a weird spot with it right now. Um, I don't want to play it anymore. Um, but we'll see. We'll, we'll, we'll see how I feel. Um, but I can't bring myself to open the game right now. Dum, 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 dum. Did you ever get response from Malcolm? I, I never sent it. He, he preemptively messaged me. What happened with My Hero Academia? Uh, my place or yours, brother? Um, what happened with My Hero Academia? Basically... I spent, just to be honest with you guys, I spent enough money where I'm embarrassed at the amount of money I spent on the game, and I had a wake-up moment where I realized how much I had spent, uh, and now I can't bring myself to open the game out of uh, depression. Um, you guys are the best. How old are you, man? I am 28 years old. I will be 29 in about a month and a week, so about uh, five weeks. Sorrow best unit right now? I think Sorrow is likely the best unit in the game right now. Maybe Zoma. Sorrow beat Zoma though, so maybe Sorrow. See you guys. Uh have to sleep. It's late in Germany. Royal Heights. Highs, thank you so much for being here. I appreciate you just showing up for the stream. I'm lagging as fuck. Going now. See you, dude. Thanks for the entertainment. Christian, thanks for being here. I'll be live tomorrow as well. We'll play some Dragon Quest Tact. Um, and that is that. So hopefully I get to see you tomorrow. You can relate with Tact. Yeah, I haven't spent as I've spent as much as I want to on Tact, and I feel good. Do you know how old Chase is? Chase is like 32? I'm going to guess 32 is how old Chase is. I'm sure he's told me. I don't remember, but he's slightly old, he's slightly north of 30 is uh, what I believe. Um, also, Chase, I believe, is more right-leaning politically. Not that it matters, but I'm more left-leaning politically. Uh, but, you know, it just shows that everyone can get along, I think. I like Chase a lot. I know Chase gets a lot of shit in the community. And I, that's one of the reasons why I wanted to do one. I wanted to do the podcast with Chase because I truly, really, really enjoy Chase's company and have a good time talking to him. Um, but the, um, but also like, I, I feel like I have a pretty good image in the dragon quest community. Maybe it's different now. I don't know. Um, but Chase, um, Chase doesn't. And so I don't know. I feel like us being together might be hopefully, help people paint him in a better image um because i don't feel like people hate me in the community but people do tend to hate chase and uh since i like chase i also want people to like chase um you wanted those spicy bundles on my hero academia yes i had a moment of weakness and depression and i have made a terrible mistake in that game and now i can't bring myself to even play it i won't lie uh so i'm trying to get a refund i don't know if it's going to work it hasn't yet, but I think I may never touch the game again out of uh, that. Are you going to play Dragon Quest Twelve when it drops? Yes, I'm going to do a full playthrough of Dragon Quest Twelve. I don't know fuck about that game, and I will be doing a playthrough start to finish. 
It may be, it depends on where I'm at in my life at that point. Whenever it comes out, it's not even close. Um, right now, if I do a full Let's Play series, I plan on doing it Patreon exclusive. Uh, mostly to not, two reasons, money motivated. I want more people to subscribe to my Patreon, obviously, you know. Um, but also because putting 100 episodes of an RPG on YouTube makes the whole channel look worse. But yeah, don't worry. We'll do Dragon Quest XII when that comes out. Um, my next game is probably going to be Disgaea VI, which is coming out in a few weeks here, I think. Have you played Dragon Quest IX? Dragon Quest IX is not one that I've played. The only ones I've... I was going through and playing Dragon Quest games. I've played Dragon Quest I and Dragon Quest III, um, both here on YouTube. Um, the next one I was going to play is either Dragon Quest V, Dragon Quest IX, or probably Disgaea VI first. Um, and that will be on... Um, patreon exclusive at at this point all my let's play series i plan on being patron exclusive we will try one full series see how it works if no one watches it then i will put it back on youtube or something if you use google wallet you can ask for a refund telling them you're yeah, yeah i already used google and google refused the refund without uh asking me without even letting me explain why they said it doesn't fit within their policies it 100 does fit within their policies but they don't care they're not listening to me so I am going through Google and the company directly to try and um, get an exception to their policy that it isn't against. Dragon Quest games are beautiful. I agree. I love the franchise more than Final Fantasy. At this point, I do as well. Um, I like Final Fantasy in their hate and my idea of their golden age more than I like um, Dragon Quest and his golden age, which is still currently in. Um, but I don't like old Final Fantasy or new Final Fantasy. I like Final Fantasy 6, 7, 8, and 10. A lot. And then old Final Fantasy is like, okay. New Final Fantasy is like, okay. Um, but Dragon Quest is consistently great. Dragon Quest IX is actually really good. Uh, graphics are a little dated now, unfortunately. Graphics do not bug me at all. I'm okay with that. Uh, you can improve on emulator settings and make it beautiful. I probably wouldn't do that. I like old, old, bad graphics. I think it adds to the charm. You got high host or Final Fantasy 16. I do not, which is perfect because going in with high hopes is a sure way to be disappointed for me personally. I didn't think Final Fantasy 15 was very good. Um, and so I'm unlikely to think Final Fantasy 16 is very good, but we will see. I'm sure I'll play it and I'll have a good time. Whether or not I'll have a good time for the whole thing, who knows? Final Fantasy and Dragon Quest spinoffs can be really good too. Yep. Um, also, um, Dragon also uh Persona spin-offs are really good. Like uh I mean Shin Megami Persona is a spin-off, but not really anymore. Uh but uh Persona Q2, I really want to play as well, and that is on the 3DS, I think. So maybe I could do a playthrough of that one day on emulator. Um we'll see. The ending of Final Fantasy 15 was so sad. Yes and no, I think. I think the game is so like Yes, but also so much of the game was so ridiculous and so much of the story was so stupid that it does take away from it a little bit. In Dragon Quest IX, uh, you can fight all of the old bosses in post-game. It's huge. That's cool. I don't do, I don't like doing post-game for older RPGs, though. Um, it depends. I have to be really, really intrigued with the combat system in order to do post-game. Um, if, if the combat system it doesn't grip me, and I don't find it interesting to continue min-maxing these characters to the highest level, then I'm not going to do it. I'm playing Persona Innocent Sin right now, the first game. Interesting, never played that one. I've played 3, 4, 5, you know, the, the Western popular ones. Um, have you ever played Fire Emblem? DQT kind of reminds me of those games. I have played many, 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 many Fire Emblems, and I did a full, I streamed my entire playthrough of Fire Emblem Three Houses. I don't love Fire Emblem Three Houses, um, I think it's good. I think the story sucks and I don't think requiring me to play a game three or four times to get a full story is good game design, whether or not you find it interesting or not. Um, I hated the idea that I don't get a full com comprehensive, interesting story in one playthrough of the game that they wanted me to play it through a bunch of times in order to get the full story. I think that's very, very, uh, silly and dumb. I know not everyone agrees with me though. Yeah, I played uh, the original Fire Emblem. I've played like 10 Fire Emblems. Awakening on the GBA title of Fire Emblem are the best. Didn't like Three Houses either. I loved Awakening. Awakening was great. I loved, I used Donald for, you know, my whole playthrough once I got him. He was like a fucking god. 
because I love getting like that level one or whatever villager that you have to try really hard to make sure they don't die and then they become like an absolute monster by the end of the game. Imagine a DQ tactics game for real consoles. I would love an actual full console release of a Dragon Quest Tactics game. I'm hoping that's kind of what Dragon Quest Monsters can be whenever that comes out, but God fucking knows whenever we're getting that shit, if ever. Um, I would love a console release of Dragon Quest Tactics. Not this game, obviously, but like a tactics-based monster collector game where I could spend 100 hours farming monsters and getting stronger and stuff. I'm just squeezing a sponge here. There's literally no reason. I just, uh, it helps my ADD. But yeah, if I get a refund in My Hero, I'll probably go back to playing it. If I don't, I honestly just don't, I don't think I have it in me. Um, I'm actually a little ashamed of the amount I've spent in there. So I won't spend any more though. Like I've had my full wake up moment. I'm definitely under control. I got the gotcha bug and now I am cured. Any remember Dragon Quest Tactics on DSiWare? I don't know that. That would be sweet. Would indeed be sweet. Um, all right. Is there any any more questions? Anyone wants to know anything? Hang out. Thank you guys for being here. Um, I appreciate it a lot. Um, but I'm probably going to be ending the stream here soon. Um, I'm honestly just going to play Classic WoW for the next, like, five hours. Like, just sit here and be with myself and play Classic WoW. Um, but then... Tonight, I got to record some videos. Um, but yeah, I mean, that's basically it. Not a whole lot going on. We're talking about Kage amount. We're talking Kage amount on My Hero Academia. Probably not, but I think it's um, it's the, the, the amount of time has been... The amount of time the game has been out versus the amount of spending. Uh, I will say it's... So it's extra disappointing because I purposely wasn't going to spend that much money. And then I also currently don't have a job, as you guys know. So it's like, definitely was like, a, I had an intervention with myself. Uh, and so now we're good. Take care, dude. Keep up the good work. Play some WoW. I'm excited, man. The fact that I could pay $15 and I could do everything in World of Warcraft is pretty crazy. Same from France. Time to sleep. Yep. I just, it's only 3 p.m. here, 3.30 p.m. here. So I gotta, I still gotta do something with my day. I still got to get to level six. I still got to get to level 70 in classic TBC. I'm very excited. I'm not even close. I'm only 62, but 62 is closer than 60 was uh, a day or two ago. So I'm getting there. Anyway, guys, thank you much. So much. Perplatypus is perplatypus. Um, looks like everyone's going to bed. And honestly, I had a great time today. I think I might, we might start doing the podcast live like this. I had a really good time with it, honestly. Um, yeah, and that's it, guys. Thank you. You go. You have. I hope you guys have a great day. If you want to hang out with me, check out the Discord. Let's see if I have a Discord set up. Discord. No. Um, I actually, I'll set up Nightbot for tomorrow's stream where he'll uh, set it up so he gives you a Discord link. Because um, I used to have it on Twitch. I just forgot that I don't anymore. Um, let's just go ahead and uh, invite people. Let's just copy. Let's just use this. All right, there you go, guys. If you want to join Discord and talk to me, feel free to um, just click that link right there. Join, say hi. You could direct message me. I don't block anyone or anything yet. Um, yeah, I, did, I did say yet. Yeah. If you harass me, I'll block you. Probably not. I don't know. Well, it depends on how bad the harassment is. Anyway, I'm just rambling now. Peace out, guys. Thank you so much. Um, obviously, it would be a huge, awesome thumbs up deal to me if you guys consider joining my Patreon. Uh, my Patreon, I am trying to, uh, I would like to do this as a job, but I've definitely already come to the realization. I already knew it, but this is not going to be my job, I don't think. Uh, I think I'm going to have to get a job. But right now, I'm just doing content creation, so all the support I get means doubly what it would under a normal circumstance. So, hope to see you guys there. And my phone died, so that is it. Peace out, friends. See you guys next time.